you have never watched a video feed podcast on Spotify before, a settings pop-up box will pop up. Tap on settings, turn data saver off, go back to the episode, hit play. You'll never have to do this. Box back in, welcome home. As I see you look at yourself as I, usual. I look honor. more tan than you do. Well, good for you. Yes. Look, 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 you're coming up. Mine's all natural though. This is laying in the backyard. Same shit. What's the difference? Standing in the tanning bed doesn't well, count. Well, it's quicker. It's quicker. It's quicker. And they're mirror, they're mirror bulbs, so it's a little bit different. And you don't have to sweat. Yeah, but you want to sweat, though. You want to get water out of it, right? I don't give I a guess. fuck. <laughs> Hot. Um, All right, yeah. so for people like Scott that don't know, and maybe people that didn't see the other four that we did, summarize a little bit about what you're known for with the mortgage fraud, and don't leave out the Simpson names. Um, My name is... Uh, where is that? I know you've done this. Where's the camera? Times. This one? Yeah. Okay. Um, my name. See, I feel like I'm not looking in the camera though. Hold on. I got it. All right. My name is Matthew Cox, <laughs> and I'm a con man. Um, see, I, I'm estimated to have defrauded the banks out of between 15 million and 55 million dollars, 40 million dollars of which, which honestly was was just bank loans. So I don't even count that. I personally am being was held accountable for $15 million in fraud. Uh, let's see. Basically what I did, the, the quick version is I created synthetic identities, which wasn't even a thing then. I, I called them phantom borrowers. But you know now it's that's turned into, as people have started doing it more and more now, they know them as, know, are known as synthetic identities. And what I did was I convinced the Social Security Administration to issue Social Security numbers to children that don't actually exist. I created false documents and went in and said that I had a, a seven-month or a 10-month-old <laughs> child that was born, not in the hospital, but with a midwife. And they would look and they go, wow, you're right. And I give them the birth certificate and shot records and they They'd issue me a social security number. I would then get credit cards in those names, in those names, saying that they wasn't a child. It was a 30-year-old person. And then I'd get credit cards. I'd make the payments. The next thing I know, I've got 700 credit scores. I then turned around and I would buy houses in those, those um, synthetic identities, names. And then I would record the value of the houses at about five times what I'd buy them at. So if I bought it for, let's say, $50,000, i would record the sale at two hundred or 250000 and I did that with dozens and dozens. The FBI said 109 houses in Ybor City, in Tam which is in Tampa. I think I feel like that's an exaggeration. I don't remember 109 <laughs> houses. Maybe it was 108. Maybe it was. It was. It was up there. It was a lot. So I did that, and it raised the entire area of uh, the value in that area through the roof. It raised it to such a degree that uh, <laughs> Forbes listed the zip code, the Ybor City zip code, as one of the top 20 fastest growing it's all uh, zip codes zip codes <laughs> in the nation and that was in uh yeah so then what i would do is i would have each one of these guys who had 700 credit scores and of course i'd made made fake jobs for them and everything and you verifiable i mean these are all real companies that were they were shell companies but and i would say that they had money in the bank and of course the banks were all fictitious i would make fake online banks and fake bank statements the whole thing you could call so then they would refinance the house so the guy's now, now this synthetic identity owns a house that he bought for 50, 40 or 50,000 that he can get an appraisal for $200,000 on and he just refinances it and gets, let's say a 90% loan. Well, that's $180,000 and we've got 50,000 in the house. So there's a profit there of about 130, less closing costs, whatever. So let's say 120. So each one of these fictitious borrowers or synthetic identities would buy five or six houses. So they get about a million dollars because you also have to include maybe thirty to fifty thousand dollars in credit cards, another another thirty to fifty thousand dollars in personal loans. You know, you can go into a bank and say, Hey, you know, I need a I need a loan, a personal loan, and they'll give you like fifteen or twenty grand if you give them a pay stub. They'll give you double whatever your pay stub is, uh, you know, within a, whatever you make double whatever you make within a, a month. So, you know, I would say he makes seven thousand dollars. You get a fourteen thousand dollar loan, and I do. You do that three or four banks at the same this, in the same day. That's a nice little <laughs> bit of money. And you got to make the payments, you know, for a while. <laughs> yeah. So I make a few payments on the houses, on the mortgages, on the the personal loans, the credit cards, the whole thing. So it's it's about a million dollars. 
And so you make a few payments and then, you know, he tragically has an accident. You know, there was something happened. Things happened. He lost his job. He got into an accident. Uh, there was a there was a horrible car uh, car crash or something. And I would take my borrower's name, place his name in a newspaper article of, let's say, a recent 12 car pile up on I-4. And I would say he was life flighted to the hospital and um, he was in a coma and the doctor's even if, even if he wakes up, they said he'll never work again. So he'd stop paying the mortgages. And his, I would have his fictitious sister or his real sister write a letter saying that this is what happened. And so the banks would just start to foreclose. They, she'd say, Fuck look, it. Yeah, he's, he's, he's up. Up. It yeah. happens. <clears throat> so they take the houses back. They put them back on the market. And then they couldn't manage to sell them for what they they were they had a lint on them and they would continually lower the price and lower the price. And they'd end up reselling that house for fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000, even though it's appraising high, but it's also been vacant for months and months. And, they, and this is some company in California or New York or whatever. They don't know. And, you know they, and then if the funny thing is the only way for them to really figure out what's going on, like, why is this house not selling? Sit, you know what? Send out another appraiser. They send out another appraiser. Then that their own appraiser comes back and says it's worth two hundred and twenty thousand. <laughs> I don't know what the problem. They're like, yeah, that's crazy. They sell it. They lose a hundred and hundred and fifty thousand, whatever they lose, and they just chalk it up. So they don't even know they've been scammed. It was a great scam. I borrowed eleven point five million dollars in the names of I don't know eleven or twelve guys, and then give me some of the names. The names. The, the names are killer. So the names were. Um, <clears throat> One of the guys' name was James Red. One guy's name was Lee Black. One was Michael uh, White. <laughs> One of them was uh, David Silver. Um, I had William or you know William Blue, Billy Blue, um, and then I had a couple other that were just regular names. What was uh, the Simpson one? Oh no no the Simpson the Simpson thing happened later when the so when this whole thing collapses the FBI shows up you know keep going I'm sorry I, no, I no, it's all right. the part. Um, so the FBI shows up but what actually happens is. A buddy I was running a, a scam with got the same scam. Uh, he ends up getting arrested in the bank. Like a, a check had gotten flagged because of another scam I was running. And so a uh, check got flagged. He was trying to ca- – uh, he deposited the, ca- the check, and then he came back into the bank to – they asked him to come in for a second. He didn't think anything of it. He came in. They they arrested him. He cooperated. And they put together a task force. So while this is going on, kind of kind of unbeknownst to me, you know, I knew he'd been arrested. I got him out of jail. I mean, I thought he was okay. I didn't think he was cooperating, um, but he was. And so months went by. I'm just doing what I do, you know. And one day, the sheriff deputy shows up and says, "Hey, yo, Matt, listen." Um, he tells me he used to date. He said, "Look, I used to date a a police officer." that works for the Tampa Police Department. I was like, okay. He was, well, she was on a task force that was just handed over to the FBI. The task force was on you. They're going to come arrest you in the next few days. And I was like, huh, wow. Well, it's got the heads up. That's uh, I didn't know all that's this a shit. bad situation. <laughs> like, I didn't know some of them. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, okay, well, hey, you know, you did the right thing. Yeah. Good heads up. <laughs> Thanks, so, buddy. Right. So I got out about 80 grand in cash in like a day. Uh, ran up all my credit cards and took off, you know, with this chick I was dating. We went to Atlanta and we rented a house from somebody and then I satisfied the loans on the house. So like if you had a house for sale or a house for rent and I come, I'm, you know, we show up and we're, Hey, we'd like to rent your house. Oh, okay. And you know, he can pull credit and all that. Not in my name, obviously another fake identity. And he says, Oh, you're perfect. So we move in. Well, then I went downtown and I satisfied the loans that the landlord had on his house. And then I took the landlord's name and I made a fake ID. And then I went and I borrowed three mortgages on his house to the tune of $450,000. On the land, in the landlord's name? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh. Well, I mean, he's not happy. <clears throat> well, I'm sure he's you know. not. <laughs> I don't, yeah. I, mean, I, 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 I didn't so. make a lot of friends. <laughs> <laughs> like it's not like it's not like I came blew into town, ripped everybody off. Yeah, left like town, everybody's like run into you, and they were like, "I love that guy." There's Matt. We have a table for him, right? That shit wasn't happening. No. <laughs> so anyway, he was a CPA. I'm sure he's fine. He's fine. So I got four hundred fifty thousand dollars. Pulled the money out of the bank. Took off. Went to um. Went relocated, and then I ran a scam in South Carolina. 
where by this point I wasn't making the identities anymore. I was just surveying homeless people, getting their information and then going and getting a driver's license, ID, passport, whatever in their name. That was this episode is brought to you by Fiji. More than just water. This is not just rock. It's ancient volcanic rock that filters tropical rain, giving it double the electrolytes and its signature soft, smooth taste. It's not just water. It's Fiji water. Again, that's FijiWater.com slash MSCS, $5 off and free shipping. This episode is brought to you by Let's Get Checked. I want to talk to you guys out there who are working out all the time but aren't seeing any results. Your commitment isn't the issue. You're going to the gym all the time, different body parts, everything else. Before you go and buy a new supplement, try a new diet, new routine, let's talk about your testosterone. Low testosterone can affect anyone at any age. And low testosterone will take away muscle mass and you'll gain body fat. So let's talk about today's sponsor, Let's Get Checked. They're the worldwide leader at home testing kits. You order the testing kit, it's delivered right to your house, discreet packaging, next day delivery. You send it back, once it arrives in the laboratory, your results will be available in two to five days on your secure online account. So if you want to test your testosterone levels without leaving your home, visit Try lgc.com slash mscs and use the code mscs at checkout and get 30 percent off the link is in the description at the top when you were given like the 20 bucks yeah give them like, 20 bucks uh, so that i could take want to move. so i could take their ids get an what ID a move huh? and borrow a million dollars so <laughs> i i gave this one guy 20 bucks <laughs> <laughs> and um, I can never hear the story too many times. So I gave him twenty bucks. I get his information. I go get a, an ID in South Carolina in his name. I met him in in Vegas, and so I get an ID in his name. And then I go and I buy two houses. And then I borrow. I then satisfy the loans on those houses. And when I filled out the satisfaction from the bank, I use the name C Montgomery Burns. Yeah, which the, is the name yeah. of the aging tycoon on The Simpsons? You know the guy that owns the power plant. Yeah, the one with the bald head here. Yeah, yeah. The you know, he, he, yeah. Sm, I think Smithers is his like manservant <laughs> yeah, yeah, or something. Yeah, he walks yeah. with a cane. So I said he's like the vice president of the bank or something, and then I signed <laughs> his name and I notarized it because I have a notary. So I do that, and then now these now these two houses I bought they have no mortgages. So then I go out and I go to like five or six different banks and I borrow money against those and I get one point three million dollars lent to a guy that was homeless in Vegas. So I, I then pull, start pulling out that money. I eventually get arrested uh, in that scam and I, I'm handcuffed, brought down to the police station. But, but tell I, about the part when you were driving and you were fucking with the, the lady that well, was calling that's, you. That's coming up. So uh, I, anyway, I basically, I talk my way out of the police, like the police arrest me, bring me down downtown and oh, I yeah. convince them I that I haven't. How you did this? I don't know how you did this to this day. I convinced them that I hadn't done anything wrong. Sounds to me like the bank has an issue. You know, you need to be looking at the bank. Like, I think they did something wrong. It wasn't me. And so I convinced the detective to let me go. So he lets me go, never fingerprints me, never processes me, does fill out a police report. He lets me go. I go to two more banks, get out some more money, get in my car, take off again. Um, and meanwhile, he's on. Oh, yeah, yeah I was on this. One, and he's in the bank. They have him. I was, and he talks his way out of the bank somehow. I was, or they're I'm, like, oh, fuck, it must be us. I was, I was number one <laughs> on the Secret Service's most wanted list at that point. So I'm, I'm number one on the, I'm, I'm on the FBI. is looking for him, U.S. Marshals, yeah, whatever. I give you all the respect in the world getting out of that bank. So I go, and at this point, I'm, I'm concerned. Like, uh, things are going bad. I'm having problems with the chick I was dating. The, you know, she, we're on the run. She's breaking down mentally. She's bipolar. She's a complete whack job. So I end up calling the FBI, one of the FBI agents that was looking for me. And we, I say, try and negotiate turning myself in. But she's such a bitch about the whole thing. I mean, she's just, you know, rude and just a jerk. And, and she's lying. And I, she, I catch her in a couple different lies. And I'm like, look, I, you know what? Forget it. Like, it was a bad idea. I've been calling you. So I throw her out. I might throw the phone out the window. Then, then I go back to retrieve a car a few days later and I'm in the Starbucks across the street from my, uh, my condo where I was staying, you know, in another name. I mean, these are all different names and you have to keep in mind the whole time I've, I've gone, I've been going to, I've gone to uh, Bermuda. I've gone to Mexico. I've gone to, uh, Jamaica. I went to, uh, um, Italy, 
went to Greece, went to Croatia. Like I've been traveling. I've got like 20 some odd uh, passports, oh, yeah. real, Robert. real state, like state department <laughs> issued passports. So he, he really did. I saw him. He really had 20, 30 passports and other names and was traveling all over the fucking world. Like so, nothing. Oh, listen, I got, I got, I'd get tickets in other guys' names. I got so many tickets in this one guy's name that I actually went to traffic school as him. <laughs> so he went, to, he, I, I, only, I had like two, three cars in his name. I can't lose. I can't, I can't have his license go bad. So I had to go. So anyway, the, the point is another time I get the, I'm in a Starbucks. I almost get arrested by the U.S. Marshals there. I jump in my car. And I'm already in my car when I see them coming at me and I take off. Um, eventually I end up in South Carolina. Like to wrap it up, I end. I'm, I'm sorry. I end up in uh, Nashville, Tennessee, and uh, I was dating a girl, and she and I were messing with this other chick, and um, I it turns out I was going to be on Dateline. Dateline, you know, keep in mind there's been 50, 60 articles on me at that point. The St. Petersburg Times alone did thirty, I think thirty five articles. So you can imagine I was in the Chicago Tribune. I was I was all over the place. I was on uh, Fortune magazine did did an article on me. So did um. Oh gosh, it's called uh, uh, Bloomberg Business Week. Did a couple of articles, uh, Chicago Tribune, everything. So I was going to come out on Dateline. NBC was doing a one-hour special. So I was going to leave the United States. I was like, I just can't be in the U.S. when this happens. I need to just relocate. So I was pulling money out, and my girlfriend ended up confiding in the chick that we were messing with, and that girl called the Secret Service and turned me in, and I got arrested. That's it, and that was it. <clears throat> but you really, you really fucked the banks more than anybody, right? I was the banks, and like all out of all my victims, I have, I have four victims that honestly combined all of them, I owe less than thirty grand because I didn't take any money from them, but they did hire attorneys. Like you've got six mortgage companies trying to foreclose on a house that you know you own. Like you either negotiate, you either try and do all that legal work yourself, or you go to a lawyer. And so they would go to a lawyer, and one guy paid like ten. Thousand, another guy paid like six, another one eight, another one four or five. So it comes like twenty seven, twenty eight thousand. And do I owe that money to them? Absolutely. Was it a scumbag move on my part to to involve those people? Absolutely. I mean, no doubt at all. Like you know, but I wasn't emptying old women's pension funds, you know. But it was still a scumbag thing to do. Like right. I'm not doubting I'm a scumbag. I'm not and saying I, and I I'm say really that because nice we always talk about this American greed and the other ones. They they chop it up to make it out like you stole from this person, that person took that girl from her kid. Right. When none of that happened. No. It, so at most, what do you owe? Maybe a hundred thousand to people. At, no. At less, I'm, less than thirty. Was, less than thirty. Right. Okay? Less than thirty. And, but they make it seem like you took. Forty million from people. You yeah, know? I owe my restitution's like six million, and then they always, here's what they always do: they always these programs always interview one or two victims, yep. and then they say Cox has over fifty victims. So you think, oh my God, he has over fifty people just like that? No, the rest are banks. Right. So there's four people. They interview two of the four. Right. And now everybody thinks that the, like they're all you said, that, yeah. they're, that there's fifty other ones with the same side story that they have. You know what I always say whenever they're like, "Well, we, we whenever they come to interview me, interview me, they're like, we'd like to talk to some of your your uh, your victims." I'm like, "Oh man, that should be easy. I could give you a bunch of them." And they're like, oh, "Okay, yeah, that'd be great. Thanks." I'm like, "So you can, I'm sure you can find somebody at Bank of America to talk to you. Um, there's got to be somebody from like SunTrust Bank. I know there's uh, got to be someone for they're like, oh oh no no, no we were we were thinking uh, like a person." I was like, well, if you want to do an accurate representation of my victims, you should talk to the bank. And they're like, well, no, we were. Uh, yeah, I know what you're doing. Yeah. You know, you want to make me look like dog shit, which is fine. But come on, bro. Like, If you're serious, if you're a serious journalist, you talk to somebody. Right. At bank do you want America. the real fucking story or do you want the fabricated story right. that you think is going to get more ratings yeah, or they, whatever? They want to guide the story. You know, they want to shift it. They want to tell it from a, people think, oh, no, the truth is the truth. No, no, there is no truth. There's just different versions of the same story. And each one of those stories has a little bit of truth to it. Exactly. You know I mean? Exactly. Yeah. There's no omnipotent person that can tell the truth. It just never happens. It's always there's always a slight twist or tweak or, you know. So yeah, and then and then another amazing thing you did was War Dogs. Yeah, I well when, when I was incarcerated, I wrote a bunch of stories, and I got some guys in Rolling Stone magazine. Um, I I optioned the film rights to some stories, some of the stories that I wrote because I wrote a bunch of true true crime stories of real guys, 
and then I uh, I ended all very good. Yeah, I mean, I've I, read them I all. Appreciate that. <laughs> I tap them. <laughs> working on some, uh, turning them into a, a couple of them right now into good. documentaries. Um, and then I met Ephraim Devaroli, which is the guy Jonah Hill plays in War Dogs. He was incarcerated with me, so I wrote his memoir, which is called Once a Gun Runner. And then he got out. He sued War. He sued Warner Brothers for the movie. Warner Brothers apparently had gotten a hold of the manuscript and used it to help craft the story. And there's a whole dispute there on whether or not how much of the story is actually a part of the actual movie. But you know, he sued them. I sued them. I sued him. When by the time I finally got out, we had all kind of settled. Um, and uh, yeah, and that. Oh, you did settle that. Yeah, I settled it. The last time I remember, for, they were offered you like twenty grand or some shit. Something no, they, crazy. they 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 listen. Trust me, what I settled for was not what I deserved. But you know, it, in the enough. at the end of the day, it's a it's an intellectual property case. Like pe- most people think, oh, you got to sue you guys. Okay, listen, it's not a it's not a car accident where someone's clearly at fault and you're suing the insurance company that has deep pockets. You're suing over intellectual property, which is questionable, and those suits take to, to fight them hundreds of mil, or hundreds of thousands of dollars, right? So it could be half a million dollars to get finally to get in front of a judge and get awarded three hundred thousand. Well, what lawyer is taking that? So the lawyers want money up front. So I can't fight Warner Brothers long term. Eventually, you just take a plea. You're like, I or, what, take a plea. You just take a deal. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, you just take a settlement. You yeah. know, you're like, I just, I'm worn down, and what am I going to do? And I can't keep fighting. And I got well, the lawyer. You know, the lawyer's already anything I get at this point. The lawyer's going to the lawyer. You know, if you can even find an intellectual property property attorney that will take a case on contingency, because they just don't. Because they're like, look, the average personal injury attorney who is car crashes, you know. Though the average case lasts 16 months. So they can afford to front the money for 16 months, but the average intellectual property case takes like six years. And there's a ton of paperwork. This isn't one motion, maybe two. I remember that stack of paperwork. Okay, it was huge. like, the, it's huge. this is about this high. I was in prison. When I, when I was in prison and started that case, I actually had to start putting some of my legal work in someone else's lo- uh, um, legal locker and my personal law. I mean, you just didn't have enough space for it. Yeah, it was crazy. I, I had a lawsuit with Mercedes. It took six years. Six fucking years. And that was that was personal injury. <clears throat> it was a crash under yeah. a lease, and the, the one person was blaming one for another one. I, I took it. I took it. And then... We fought it, but it took five years to get to the point where there was actually a deal made, settlement made. Yeah, I mean, you're lucky to find a lawyer that will that will say, I'll, you know, will say, I'll take it on contingency. Most of them, this is a why. This is why Hollywood is allowed to fuck people over, over and over and over again, is because they know. Let's say you've wrote an amazing script, or you've written an amazing story or article. They know I can. We can take that from him. We don't have to give him anything. We can, even though technically you do. It's your intellectual property. He, you know, look, Tommy wrote it, but you know what, Tommy, Tommy doesn't have any money. Tommy works as a waiter and he writes on the side. So we'll just take that and we'll run with it. We'll turn it into a series. And if he see, sues us, we'll give him. A tenth of what he, he's really owed. Why? Because he'll never be able to get a lawyer that will sue us and hang out for eight to ten years to, for him to get what he's really deserved. And in the you know in the end, he'll take something because something is better than nothing. nothing at all. And they probably already have like the paperwork to fight it. They probably have like a base script because you know they probably they do it all the time. Yeah, so they, 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 they probably the already the have the paperwork. They just put a different name on it. We, you know the guy. Um, God, what's the guy's name? You know, uh, one of the biggest box office hits ever was, um, oh gosh, uh, was it Gump, uh, Forrest Gump? Forrest Gump. Yeah, yeah. Forrest Gump. So the movie Forrest Gump, the guy that wrote that, he he got a deal where he was getting a portion of the, um, you know, of the profit, right? And it was a massive success. Well, it turns out in the end, he got very little money, almost next to nothing. And it was like, why? Well, because the studio came in and they said, we're going to, so, um, you know, 
we're going to go ahead and we're going to use this. What we we own this company over here. They're going to do the film work. We own this one. They're going to do the leasing of all the stage equipment. This one does the look. So they they divvied out all the money to other companies that they own. And in the end, even though they were saying it's a major box office smash because it made, you know, whatever, two, three hundred million dollars way back when they were like, but in the end, there's all, there was only a few million in profit. Oh, and here's your money. And it was like, this is the biggest movie that's come out in the last 10 years. Yeah. I, I made almost nothing. They're like, yeah, I know. Well, you know, the expenses. And it's like, yeah. you know, you screwed me. Like they, like, like they know what they're doing. They're professional con artists. Yeah, and then because then when it comes out on cable, they're getting paid every time that right. plays, right? Yeah, they get paid forever. So this guy's getting little checks for $1.50 a month. But, you know, you got to get screwed crazy. a time. Dollar times. fifty and for a first comp. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, that's... You know, it's just what happened. And, and that's happened to me over and over again. Same thing with like, you know, I, I've had it happen. I actually actually just had, I didn't sue them, but I did sign a confidentiality agreement where I had, I had a company, a very well-known comp- company, production company. Uh, they've got a channel, the whole thing. Like if I told you, you'd be like, oh, absolutely. I know who that is. Yeah, they're huge. They came to me and to try and talk to me about a uh, Boziak story. You know John Bozak, yeah. and I was like, "No, I can't. I've already optioned his life rights, so you can't. We can't. You can't do his story." And they were like, "Okay, well, man, we're doing this series, blah blah blah." And I was, they were like, "Do you have anybody else?" And I went, "Yeah, actually, I've got a great guy that would fit perfect. I give him that that guy." I said, "But listen, you know, I want this and this for that." And I said, twenty thousand, and they came back and they said, "Well, I could probably get you ten. And I was like, "Okay, well, I'm not greedy. If as long as I don't have to sign over the life rights or anything, it's just just you're just going to talk to him and that's it. You're going to do the story based on my story. And they said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, I want to. I also want a, an EP credit. And they said, no problem, no problem. What's an, what's an EP credit? Um, like an executive producer. Okay. And I said, I want to be an exec, ex, have, have an executive producer credit. You know, which all of this is nothing. Like this is one little line when the stuff shoots up at the end. Like this is not a big deal. And they were like, yeah, no problem. We, I know I can get you that. They said, well, well, look, we need to talk to the guy first. To make sure that, um, to make sure that he's willing to do it, and I was like, "Yeah, I don't have a problem with that." And I gave him the number, and probably a week later, I sent a, uh, I, I sent a, an email and said, "Hey, I haven't heard from you." And then they came back and they sent me, sent me an email said, "Well, this is the email we sent him," and then I said, "Okay." And then I called and I said, "Okay, have you heard from him?" Like a week later, and I didn't hear anything back. And maybe a month or two later, I called, or I think I sent a text mess. I think I texted the uh, producer, nothing. And I thought, and then I texted the guy, which I had wrote his story. He never responded. I sent him an email. Did you ever hear from these guys? You know, he said, I said, are you still in Orlando? Have you heard from these people? He said, yeah, I'm still in Orlando. Never said anything else. Then he never responded again. I thought, that's weird, but I'm I'm doing so many things. I, I put it out of my mind. And... I want to say three to six months later, um, I had a, I was talking to a friend on the phone. He goes, whoa, bro, I saw so-and-so's story on such-and-such. Such. Man, that's fucker. great, man. I went, no, and I went and looked it up, and sure enough, they'd contact him. They interviewed him. They did the whole story. And, so he, I, and he just threw you, threw you oh, to of the fucking side? Of course, side. Yeah, yeah, Motherfuckers. Yeah. Well, people are just back. <clears throat> All so, you know, But and, you, but and you did have him sign, though, right? Well, I... Unfortunately, him we had he had never signed. We had a life rights agreement that he said we were, he was good with, but I never got the documents back. And I'm doing so many things, and also I'm thinking there's not much he could do with that story because he, there's no media out there on him, and I have the only version of his story. So it's very clear, and I have a, the copyright on the story. Like I very clearly own this story, and so could he go off and do something by himself? He could technically. He doesn't owe me anything, but this company does. You just used my story, which we talked to, which I directed you to, which I told you what I wanted for it. You knew what I wanted. I have an email, emails that say it, and then you turn around and you screw me out of it. And you have you the, can't do you that. have the copyright, right? Mm-hmm. Well, and then I went to them, so I went back with them, and we we argue. Uh, I, it really wasn't much of an argue argument. <laughs> I, I left a nasty message on the producer's cell phone. <laughs> Two days later, I get a phone call from their lawyer. I get on the phone. I said, "Look, you know, you owe me money. Here's what you, you know, you owe me this, this, this." They're like, "No, look, you don't understand." And I said, oh, "No, no, no, cut the now, shit." Now you don't understand, motherfucker. I right? said, "Listen," and I, I just laid it into her, and she came back. She goes, "Hold on, I'm going to come back, and I'll get you an offer." Came back, gave me, you know, it wasn't much. 
it wasn't much. It was, a, it was, it wasn't, I can't even say what it was. It wasn't, it wasn't what I deserved. It wasn't what I thought I was going to get, but it was something. It was a nice little chunk of change. And for the amount of effort I put into it, it's fine. I still have that, the story, but I mean, it's constantly happening. Yeah. So you have, like, I'm constantly on alert. For you that. have to cross your, dot your eyes, cross your yeah. keys out the ass. And you have to just assume, like, it's, it's a, a vicious, vicious industry. I mean, I would rather deal with other criminals than yeah. deal with people in it Hollywood. It sounds like it's crazy cutthroat. Yeah, at least with other criminals. You kind of help each other out once in a while. Well, and not just that. Yeah. <laughs> you're not. You're not behind us uh, uh, in, in a, on the fifth story or the twelfth story of some building in New York or Los Angeles, and I'll never see you. If you're in B three, <laughs> and I'm in B B two, and you fuck me over, you know, there's we're a good chance you get. Yeah, sometimes. we're gonna see each other, and you're gonna, you know, you could get hurt. Right. Like, there's a very immediate ramification for screwing somebody <laughs> over in jail. At least you know <laughs> yeah. this is, you know, I, and I can't let this go. You either let it go or you do something to the guy. And and let's face it, some soft, fat, bald, you know, white executive in Warner Brothers is going to be fairly, you know, polite to you. And if he knew he had to see you every day, if he knew he might get stabbed or get his ass beat or ha or have to check in, and I don't have to. I'm a soft white guy. Like I'm not beating your ass, but that guy might beat your ass for me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, <clears throat> yeah, I, you give him part of the payout. Yeah, yeah maybe. You, you know, you know, Bernie Madoff. Yeah. You know, like a lot of these guys that fuck people over on the regular, they'll go to prison and you hear within a few months they get the shit kicked out of them. Oh, why? Yeah. You know, it's always like, why? Why? Because you can't behave that way. Yeah. You can't be prison. a scammer in their pal. Right. You, you better know? pay your debt. You run your debts up and you don't pay them. <laughs> you better, you better be paying your protection money. <laughs> Especially in a pen. Right. So, uh, yeah. So That's now what made you start inside the darkness? That kind of that was that kind of just came up out of nowhere, or, I, or how'd that come together? So, uh, tap two. You, you will appreciate this more than anybody else. What is uh, other than you know, like nobody can see, like all the cameras, and they, you know, you've got the um, my guy calls himself a um, wait, he's got a good name. Oh, his name is uh, so Colby runs my channel. Connor is uh, works with Colby, and Colby says he's a uh, not a. A video engineer. So, video engineer. Yeah. So yeah. you've got a video engineer behind here working. Is that the? Would you say the same thing? Would you? Uh, yeah. Video engineer. Okay. You know, we were because literally, I was trying to say, well, what are you? Like, he's like, I don't know. We need to come up with a title. So I was like, well, what's the technical term? He's like, I don't know that there's an exact technical term. So I think it's board engineer. Board engineer. <clears throat> yeah, because they're running a board. Well, no, but he also does editing. Monkey. He, Monkey. 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 <laughs> <laughs> That's what I should have called him. Well, oh, there you go. There's the name. Well, Monkey so, engineer. You know, <laughs> other than the the amount of money you have to put into this whole thing, right? Like you know that. Yeah. Like that this is a big thing getting yeah. somebody here doing this, figuring out how the whole process works, you know, uploading and stuff. Up, uploading alone is is a task. You know, all of these things is a task, but once you get those down, it's pretty easy. Like that that's once you've got that done, it takes care of itself once you're kind of you got the 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 mechanism down right just crazy time consuming right. right but so other than that what is the hardest thing about running a podcast is but i'm gonna for me it's yeah. content yeah it's getting people to getting keep in mind i don't have a huge budget like i just got fifty thousand subscribers like this morning congratulations i feel good yeah so good, man um so the hardest thing for me is that if you want to come on my show you can come on my show. You have to pay your way to get here. You like I might give you gas money, but that's about all you're getting out of me. I don't have it. I can't pay three hundred and fifty or four hundred bucks to fly you in here. I can't put you up in a place for one hundred and fifty night for two nights. I can't. I can't do that. So to me, it's like the hardest part is just getting yeah. the guys there. Mm -hmm. So I figured, you know what? But once they're here, if I can get them here, I need to milk them for all they're worth. So I figured, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do another, uh, I'm going to do a separate, um, I'm going to do a separate channel and that, and so first you show up, I'll interview you, just you and me. That way during that interview process, you kind of get a, because some people can't tell their story. It kind of helps them formulate their story because it, once something's interesting, like I'll stop you and say, whoa, 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 whoa what do you mean? Like I had a guy one time, I want to say, I think he did this. 
several times and I like didn't stop him. He's like, you know, we went in the bank and you know, woo, woo, woo. We got this much money and we took off. And it was like, whoa, 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 whoa. What was the woo, woo, woo? Like, that's what I want to know. What's the woo, woo, woo? So then he was like, uh, you know, I mean, like, you know, my boy took care of what he had to take care of. Well, yeah, what, what did, did he, he have to take care of? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what was it? He was like, you know, the customers. And, you know, he had to, you know, take care of the customers. How? You know, and then you come to find out. Then he's like, he doesn't want to say that. He do not want to say <laughs> they zip tied the cu- six customers, <laughs> yeah, put them on the ground. You got to break them to get right. it out. And then he's like, yeah, that's pretty. Well, yeah, you're right. That's pretty fucked up. Like, I can see how that turned into woo, woo, woo. Um, but so I figure if once the guy gets there and he for- formulates his story and sees what's interesting and kind of understands what I'm like, yeah, 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 don't worry about that. Let's keep going. Or, hey, tell me more about that. Now he kind of have a, has an understanding of how what's interesting about a story. So why not put him in another room and have him tell a story on his own that has nothing to do with me? Because so my channel is Matt Cox, right? Like Matt Cox, uh, Inside True Crime. That's my channel. But I've already got a guy here who's robbed 10 banks or I got a guy here who used to sell drugs for the with the cartel or or I've got a guy who used to make money, he used to make counterfeit money. Like, why not have him go in another room and do kind of like a soft white underbelly, which is a, a huge, huge, it, huge. It's, it's a huge channel out of uh, Los Angeles run by a guy named uh, Mark Leda. Great guy. V- really nice guy. And I can't do like I. I, you know, mine is like, you know, Danny with concrete. He called it a, he goes, he goes, it's a discount. He said it's a low budget. He goes, it's a low budget soft white underbelly. No, he goes, a discount. He goes, he goes, he goes I saw your discount um, soft white underbelly. And I said, I don't have a problem with that. But, you know, but, I, but again, I can't. You go back to the beginning. He has the money to fly the people. Exactly. Like he just flew in uh, Charlie the dog guy. The, the guy that had, he saved the doll. He found oh, yeah, the doll yeah, yeah. that got Why, shot I, in the head. Yeah, yeah. yeah the guy, he just flew him, into, he flew him in like a month and a half ago. To do soft uh, white. Yeah, soft white. That, that's great. Look, and but what I'm saying a great is, guy. I'm, I'm going back to what you had said. He's got that million subscribers, but he's got the money he to give Charlie that. a grand to fly in. Yes. You know? like, I can't. So I have, to, I have to get as much out of you as I can. And so I put these guys on a stool. I went and bought a bunch of black... Um, sheets from Walmart, and I wrote rounded the entire room with them. When I, well, about half the room with them, put it on the ground, put the stool on, got a couple of cameras, got the right lighting, and I just have them sit down and tell their story. So it's very similar to what uh, Soft White Underbelly is, and I called it Inside the Darkness. And I just started that channel, and that it's you know it's. It's doing well. Like I think it's got, it's probably close to a thousand. Well, is it got a thousand yet? Or nine? Yeah, you're right there. Nine forty nine. Nine forty nine. Okay. So now, like when I'm looking at this, I see counterfeiter, bank robber, and what you're doing is basically not all of them, but some you've interviewed on your main channel, and then you found to get the best out of them, the most important part of what you're trying to right is to get them in that stool, kind of secluded, and just focus on that good part of the story yeah listen sometimes they get in there by themselves like i mean i turn on the cameras i just leave i said look man just tell you the story some of them talk for 30 minutes some guys go on for an hour and 40 or an hour and 30 minutes um and what's great about that is that sometimes like this one guy ian brown he's listen he teared up he he said some great stuff that he didn't say looking in another guy's eyes he he couldn't say it but by himself telling his story when he started talking about his brother and things that he had done and he teared up he was you know he was a a, a mess and this guy's just had a life of tragedy um go to tab three because then we can see a lot of them he he very much honestly he's 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 almost he could be on mark latest channel i mean this is a guy who's he's yeah. rough it's like nothing but drugs uh, drug uh, behavior and here's where you're just crushing it yeah oh yeah this is tiktok so yeah. i started doing tiktoks the TikToks are doing well. Uh, play that first one, uh, Scott. Talking to my uncle. Now pause this, Scott. Now what's what's this one about? I watched this, but this one's like this, freaky. Here's here's the funny thing is like this is another one like when I I never interviewed this guy. Like I I my guy wasn't there. He couldn't come. He could only come on the weekend, so I could only do inside the darkness. Listen, he start. He's talking about his mother was possessed. This is, this is a drug deal. I came to get a drug dealer story. 
He's gotten into fights and, and chases with the cops. He did a, he's been to prison several times. Like that was your story. That's what the story I'd kind of heard through friends. And I'd then never you heard put him, him in there and you get a whole nother fucking put thing. him in there. He started talking. I left. He came, play, play Scott. Came back an hour later. He's talking about how his mother was possessed by a demon. He started laughing and she was just laughing. Li yeah, time. listen to this. I remember dropping the phone on the floor and she's like on the couch, but she's like playing with her legs. Look, watch his face. And just laughing and just making faces. And I'm like, well, what the hell is going on with this lady? I don't know if anybody believes in God, but come to find out, there was a demon inside her. She was, she was being possessed. It's crazy. A demon inside her? And she comes and so much for a drug dealer, huh? No. Look, look. Fucking crazy ass just starts screaming and look. crying. Then all it's, of a sudden, look. her kids start crying. Then I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Hold on one more second. Couch, everybody's checking the ambulance, is checking her. Look. And they're like, what's going on? I remember her saying there was a demon inside of me. I'm like, oh shit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like he came in to talk yeah, about he came in to talk about drugs <laughs> like i'm talking we're supposed to be a drug story this is what he comes up with and he's talking about somebody with a demon inside yeah him. what and i don't i don't know any of this until i start editing these things like once i put the whole thing together okay then i start i still didn't pay attention to it you know i take photos of everybody i take 20 or 30 photos so that as you tell your story, there are black and white photos that kind of, you know, do the whole um, Ken Burns effect, you know, it kind of zooms in and zooms out. It catches your eye. Yeah. So I do that kind of stuff, make it kind of artistic. I try and do as close to, you know, soft white underbelly as I can, but I'm Mark Late as a professional. It looks I mean, like he's it. amazing. It does well, look like it. If you put mine next to his, well, his are amazing. Yeah. But anyway, the point is, is that I do the TikToks, but when I started breaking up the TikToks into stories, <laughs> he's got demon stories. He's got... Hey, he got on one of his TikToks. He got um, is it nine? Oh, it's a hundred thousand right there. He's got a hundred thousand views on one of his TikToks that came out a few weeks ago. He starts talking about how his mom died from uh, HIV. How, bro? It was and you and if you would have had I, an interview, you would have probably no, got none of it out of it. No, I probably yeah. definitely I wouldn't have. You know why? Because my problem with my interview style is this: is that. I'm such a narcissist, it's hard for me to truly take interest in another person. So I'm really just trying to hear an entertaining story where other people, for instance, uh, Danny with Concrete, Danny genuinely is interested in other people. And like uh, my girl, and here's a perfect example. My girlfriend one time, we met some fans of mine, right? These two older women. And so I go there and I sign some books for them you know, they're nice. She, the, the woman's very nice. She, she's always commenting. And so you kind of build up a little relationship with these guys. And I've talked to her on the phone and we've texted, you know, I, I I'm, you know, I, I want to be, I, I want to be a nice guy to people that are supporting me. So she says, Hey, I'm coming into, I'm coming into town. Could I, could I get a signed book? And I said, absolutely. I'll, I'll, Jess and I are doing something. I'll come meet you right now or, you know, whenever. So I went that night, I met her, gave her a couple signed books Jess starts talking to her. Jess talks to her for 30 or 45 minutes, finding all kinds of stuff out about this woman. Bro, I had no interest. Oh, I, no. I, I, I have such little interest in anyone other than myself that when I left there and got in the car, I was like, and Jess never really talks. My girlfriend never really talks. I'm like, God, you were really going in all in. She's like, she was super interesting. You know, her friend has had like 40 surgeries. Like, did you see her <laughs> eyes? Like, can you believe that? Can you imagine living like that? Must have been horrible for her. I feel horrible. And I'm sitting there going, what the fuck's going on? Like, it was, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and I realized in that moment, I realized what a selfish prick I am. <laughs> like, I never, and I heard the stories that all I'm thinking of is, come on, man, we got to go. Like, I've already done my nice guy. Yeah, you're not interested. You're done. I'm done. I give you the books. Pull up by tab two again. I want to play another one, one of them. Because which one was the, the one you were telling me about in the uh, bathroom? The bank robber guy that just fucking killed shit? Or not, he was making counterfeit money. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, he's not bank robber. That's counterfeiter. Counterfeiter, right? Well, yeah. What was his whole story? Well, yeah, Is they you, took I, it down. All, it got it got four hundred and like ninety thousand views, and they took it down. TikTok. Oh, because they, yeah, that's what we're talking about. I couldn't believe that they took that shit down. They said it was instructional. It wasn't instruct. Look, when I put it up, just the interview of him on TikTok, I put a three minute interview about him making money. They said nothing. Then when I added the clips, all these movie clips from 
To Live and Die in, Die in L.A., about the counterfeiter in the movie To Live and Die in L.A. Um, it went for about four days, got almost half a million views, and then they took it down. They said, oh, it's instructional. It wasn't instructional for the two weeks that it was up, and there weren't. It's just the fact that I was showing pictures of a guy, you know, making copies of money. money. Play um, Jessica Bell, Scott. Oh yeah. Oh, there's Jeff. That, yeah, she got. Look, that I put that up yesterday. It's got twenty three thousand. Yeah, click on that. I am a former drug dealer. Ah, uh, Pacino. <laughs> Me and a friend of mine were on our way back from picking up. It was just a couple ounces, and uh, we were headed back. So we passed the state trooper. He's sitting in the median, and uh, what was she picking up? Weed. Us, turns his life no, no. So Math. We take off. And he chases us for, for about a minute, and then he, he turns his lights off, and that's it. Like, we thought we got away. So we go to our friend's house, and we get there, and we're all freaked out, but we're excited. Like, we just got away, and we thought we were going down, thinking uh, this is they it. They thought they got away, huh? They I'm thought. Doesn't look like, <laughs> no. Doesn't look like that's how uh, the story yeah. ended. Boom, boom, boom. Sheriff's Department. Open the door. They drag us out. They take us to jail. Yeah. I am a yeah. former drug dealer. So, I mean, yeah, that's, that's a great idea, though. Now, why do you think yeah, it is? Yeah, adding these really changes. The, the, because, but why do you think it is that when you have somebody in a room by themselves, more comes out? Well, I think, one, I'm directing the story when we're just talking. But when they're by themselves, they're more, you know, it's more introspective. Like, they have to really kind of think about what they're saying. And I, I think they start to say things that they might not say looking at another person. And, and a lot of times that tends to, you know, they start to think about it. And, you know, for instance, in Jess's, you know, Jess was, she's not a talker. She talked for, she, if you asked her to tell her story right now, she'd be done in like four minutes. But by herself, like I had to really, I did an interview with her. I had to pull her story out of her. And we had to recut it and recut it. When she got in the room, she talked for about about four, I think her, I think like 50 minutes is what hers is, like 48 minutes, 50 minutes. She talked for 50 minutes. And at the end of it, she starts crying about her kids, about what happened, about going to jail. Like it was like all these things that she never talks about with me. It's almost like when you put them, when after you interview them and then you put them in that room, you're taking the social anxiety away from them. And then everything starts to come out. Right. And that's what it seems like to me. Yeah. And, no, that's I mean, a great. I mean, yeah, and, and the clips are great. I mean, they're, yeah. they're very appealing and you did a great job on them. I mean, My, yeah. I'm, I think I'm, yeah, from now on, I'm going to, I'm going to do both the TikTok, sometimes just pieces of it, but I'm also going to do the movie clips. I just need to figure out what TikTok is going to be okay with. And I'm also going to do shorts like that because if the TikToks are getting hundreds of thousands of views, I think if I can figure out the algorithm or, you know, what, what's triggering the algor algorithm to to cut them um, or you know give me a community violation or take them down or whatever uh, if I can figure that out and get a, you know clip those minor pieces then I think I'm gonna start doing um, shorts too because I, I know shorts will get a ton of views I mean it's doing well and you haven't you just, just started, started just started it yeah I mean I you know I like I was said I was saying before I I only ever saw TikTok take anything down if you talked about China yeah. One, one time I had a, I did a podcast and that's how it was something about China, like something versus China or whatever. Boom. It was up for like two days, took it down. Yeah. And, no, this is, and, this, no, was, that's fucking crazy. this was up for four days, but it was, it had something to do with money. They said it, it was, they said it was a, the community violation was that it was instructional and it was like, it wasn't instructional, but I guess you could technically, you, you should interview that guy. Yeah. That guy got, I think he's got. You know, on much smaller channels, he's got hundreds of thousands of um, of views. You know, um, Danny's has got, I'm sure it's got hundreds of that. Like Danny interviewed him and didn't, he was like, ah, I didn't, he was kind of um, wishy-washy. He interviewed him and uh, he came back like when he posted it, like a week later, he goes, Jesus, that, this may be one of the best videos I've ever done. <laughs> he said, this thing's blowing up. People love this guy. And I was like, I told you, like, I've only met like three, two or three professional counterfeiters that really could do it. I and mean, there's, you always meet, you know, I went to prison and you meet, I met a couple guys that were like making, 
money on like just stupid, like making money on their, their printer and they got caught and they went to jail for two or three years. This guy made it so made, his money was so good that the secret service gave him a sentence reduction to just do a video with them showing them how he was manufacturing the money. Wow. Like they flew in a team. They, they flew in a camera crew. He sat down. He explained the paper he used. He explained the whole process to them. He said it took several hours. And then got in front of the judge. They said, okay, we're, we're, here's what you should get. Here's what you're going to get. And this is what we want. Yeah. Right? And, that, and he was like, absolutely, no problem. And I think he did. He didn't do much time at all a couple of years. Oh, listen, listen, I did my thing. He's already optioned his film rights. Wow. There's somebody writing a script on this guy right now. You know why? Because he did an interview. He did an interview with me. I immediately, because he was there, he had come in. And when he called me and we talked on the phone, I said, listen, bro, you got to get yourself here. You got to pay for everything. You got to. And this is a guy who just got out of the halfway house. I was I like, oh, great story, but I can't contribute at all. Like, I'm not giving you any money at all. I'm sorry. I wish I could. I don't have the budget. This episode is sponsored by Aurora. Do you know what the fastest growing crime in America is? For years, this crime rate has been surging and affecting millions of Americans. I'm talking about identity theft, and there's a new victim every 14 seconds. Yet despite this, those who have had their identity stolen are often shocked when it happens. That's why I'm excited to partner with Aurora, who is sponsoring this video. Aurora is identity theft protection, fraud monitoring, a VPN, password management, and antivirus software all into one easy-to-use app. Their VPN allows you to stay anonymous online by keeping your browsing history and personal information safe and encrypted. Protect you and your family from America's fastest growing crime. Try Aurora for free for two weeks and see if you or anyone in your family's personal information has been compromised. Start your free trial today. Go to aurora.com slash MSCS. The link is in the description below. This podcast is brought to you by Monster Energy. Tear into a can of the meanest energy drink on the planet, Monster Energy. It's the ideal combo of the right ingredients in the right proportion to deliver a big bad buzz that only Monster can. Monster packs a powerful punch, has a smooth, easy drinking flavor. Athletes, musicians, co-eds, road warriors, metalheads, geeks, hipsters, and bikers dig it. You will too. Monster Energy is more than just the green OG. Monster has Monster Ultra, Juice Monster, Monster Hydro, Rehab Monster, Dragon Tea, Monster Max, Muscle Monster, and many more. Buy on Amazon, buy on Walmart, or go to monsterenergy.com and believe me, you'll find a place. Unleash the beast, Monster Energy. And he was like, ah, you know, I actually have family in St. Pete. He said, so I was going to go in and see them, you know, in like a couple weeks or a month anyway, because I just got out of jail and, you know, got a cousin or whatever. And I was like, then do it. Perfect. And he he right? came in. He, he came he came in we did the thing while he was there I was like look it was it was such an interesting um interview with him talking to him and realizing during the inter interview like when you talk to John Boziak you is like he may not know you know a lot about a lot but the moment he starts talking about credit card fraud you can see it in his eyes even though I don't know much about it you know oh no 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 he knows what he's talking about. yeah like yeah, you can yeah, yeah. you can sense expertise yeah. And the moment he starts talking about it, you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, because this is good. It, because you can see that his body language starts to just, it stiffens. And, and, and he's like, boom. And he's like, you need boom, boom, boom. He rattles yeah. it off like I talk about mortgages. Yeah. You know, you know, it's like, you know what it is? It's like a fisherman knows a fisherman. Right. So uh, as soon as, so after I talked to him about it, I was like, okay, listen, I need you to go upstairs. We went upstairs. He did it again. Um, we came back downstairs. I called Danny. I said, bro, listen. I'm going to, I'm going to, you got to interview this guy. He's like, bro, I've been drinking for like two hours. I'm half drunk. What are you talking? I said, listen, I've only met a couple of these guys. This guy's special. Ah, uh, so he's like, hold on, let me see. And he comes back, calls back. He goes, can he, can he be here tonight at like six? I was like, absolutely. And I said, bro, you got to go do concrete. So he goes and he does concrete. I'm telling you okay, this, I'll you should you should talk to this guy. Yeah, I'll look into. Okay, it. he's 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 great. And look, he may end up he may end up having a movie made about him. Yeah, I mean, how many people do you know that they option their life rights? I mean, this guy saw my interview and Danny's interview. They contacted him. 
Then he contacted me and said, look, like, I'm going to send you the paperwork that these producers are sending me. Well, what should I do? And I read the paperwork over and went back and forth. And I said, Please. he said, this is what they're offering. I said, ask for more. You're it's the, not enough. You're the best with this shit. You know, so. And you still got your Matthew Cox and true crime. Yeah. Right. Uh, can you pull up tab four? Now, you started to do interviews more because before you weren't doing them at all, really. No, because I was living in, my, in a spare, living, right. somebody's spare room. Now, I know. But do, <laughs> there's there's you, no place to. I, don't I, know I, you, I understand. I know you've never lived in a spare room. Actually, I have. have you? Yeah, yeah. It's not sucks. your mom's house. Yes, I have. Oh, that's right. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I have. Huh? I forgot. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't fucking wait to get out. <laughs> now, um, do you like doing interviews better? It, like, if say you had the budget, do you like doing interviews better, or do you like doing solo better? Or do you like equally? No, I I, I like doing interviews better because it. It doesn't require as it, look. I like it if the person knows their story, you know. And I'm I'm getting better at it. Where, like, if it's look, if you if you have a story at all, I can make it entertaining because I I know what I'm entertained by tends to be what the average guy that goes to the movies is entertained by. The problem that I have is that I did an interview one time where a guy started talking about his ex partner who was also his best friend in his business. And he teared up and started to, you know, started crying about it. You know, he was like, just give me a second, just give me a second. And I was like, okay. And, and so I just sat there and waited for him to get okay, be okay and continue. You know, later when people saw that, they were like, damn, bro, like you weren't even consoling. You didn't dive into what their relation, clearly that relationship was special. This was his best friend. Like you should have talked about him and but to me, I thought, oh, he's getting emotional. I should avoid that. I don't want to make him feel uncomfortable. I, I would have avoided it, right? But you and I also have a very similar, you know, um, you and I are are more entertainment based, yeah, right. Where a decent person <laughs> <laughs> would be like, bro, it's okay. How long were y'all friends? Like, did, what did you guys like? I didn't do any of that. I, I would have been like, so what do you think happened with the Phillies last night? Yeah, I, right. Yeah, I would have just switched out of it just to right. keep I, and it moving. I think I'm doing them a favor, but the truth is, you know, there are some people that want they want to know more about that. Instead, I'm like, you know, so did you ever get shot at? Like, I'm asking, like, so what did you think when that when the bullets were flying? That's what and, I would be asking. You know, well, you're not a fucking therapist, right? So I'm thinking, like, let's jazz this. Like, yeah. look, what are the questions that make this story exciting? You did the right thing, right? That's what I think. But other people, who fuck them, would have had you know would have had people you know just crying fuck and em. just. No, it's a podcast. It's entertainment. You did the right thing. I, I, okay, nobody I wants hear to you. sit there in silence with the fucking guy upset. Right. Yeah, he's upset. Sorry. Okay. So you got shot. What right. happened? Right. I mean, that fucking story. So what I'm saying is if the person knows their story and can tell their story, I would much rather do a, an interview. You know, if they know their story. Like if if it's pulling teeth, then by the time an hour and a half later – and they walk out. I'm like, thank God. <laughs> oh yeah, that's over. That was agony. Now, you know, I, I sometimes they're rough. They're rough, and you and you don't want to be rude. You know. What you know what's funny, and some it's hard for me not to be a smart ass. Yeah, I mean, so, you're just built. Absolutely. Ass. Listen, I had this chick that came on, and she goes, <laughs> she said, you know, so you know, I did this and this, you know, and then you know. Then of course, you know, she said I got arrested. So I, th you know, two days later I got out, and I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. wait a minute. So there was the, whatever it was, the drug deal, the robbery, whatever. The, I said, and then you say you got arrested. Right. I go, did they call you up on the phone and ask you to come to the police station? She goes, oh, no, they, they showed up at my house. And I went, did they light, lightly knock on the door and ask you to please come out and place the handcuffs on you? And she goes, and she goes, oh, no, they banged on the door and I came out and they, they, they pulled their guns and they, they dragged, they threw me on the ground. I was like, right, that's what I want to know. Right, I got your beat. So I had somebody that came in. And it was actually really interesting. He, he had met this uh, doctor, Sabi, this healer dude. It was actually interesting. Right. But you can't jump right to that. So he comes in and he has a PowerPoint. Okay, no problem, right? Every time, like the first 20 minutes, he's trying to get to the PowerPoint. And finally, I say, look, listen to me. Nobody knows what the fuck you're talking about, okay? Right. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. He doesn't know what the fuck you're talking about. If you want me to pull up the PowerPoint, I will. But you know what? It's going to go nowhere, and people are going to click the fuck off, and you're right. not going to sell anything because nobody knows what the fuck you're talking about with this health food shit. So until we get to 
figure out what the base is, this healing shit, how it started, yeah. how it works. Prove to me that it works. Then we go to the PowerPoint and you can explain your little fucking slides. But it was one of those where, you know, they, although in your situation, she was just blah, 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 and not telling the cool stuff. In my situation, the kid came in with an agenda yeah. But didn't understand what the fuck he was doing in here, and you know I. But it's the same thing. You, same you did the thing. same thing. Yeah. You knew I have to give them a, a frame of reference. Like to me, she skipped over. Like this chick's been arrested a bunch of times and gone to jail a bunch and of I times. And I want to hear that. Right. Well, I mean, to me, you can say, and then yeah, I got arrested. Like I get it. I know what you're talking about, but I also know they that the guy that works at Walmart forty five hours a week. And has a wife and two kids and plays little, you know, little league. Like he doesn't know what it's like to be. Exactly. So you have to tell me that. And then she was like, "Oh, okay, right, right." And you know, she hangs out with everybody. She hangs out with has also been arrested. <laughs> so to her, you know, people. You so know, when, yeah, you when she's talk, arrested, it's just like arrested. Yeah, yeah. You're, you know, you and I talked. You said, "Yeah," and the guy came up and he started asking me questions. That it was like, you know, you know, and, and I'm like, "Yeah, right." And then we keep going. Like I don't have to say, you don't have to explain to me what that means, but I know you're thinking, sounded to me, you know, he may have been wired, he's asking really, really specific questions, I wondered if the phone was wired, I wondered why are you asking me that, like, I know what that, you know, he started asking a lot of questions, you right. know? But the FedEx guy who's driving is just interested in the truth. He wants crime. to know he why you know think that's why. Tr right. Like, why what you, led up well, to that point? Yeah, well, and, and well, well, why is it, so he's, at, maybe he's just inquisitive now. No, he's not no, inquisitive. No, no, he's no. a criminal. Yeah. And he's asking a lot of specific questions that criminals just don't ask. He's wired. Or he's planning on fucking you over somehow. And I, I love I love the channel. And I love the new icons too. Or thumbnails, whatever the fuck you want to call yeah, them. Yeah, those are those are Colby. So now give me one that you've done, say in the last well, since you've been here. You haven't been here in six months. Like one that really th gave you a like a jaw dropper, other than that guy with, with the counterfeit money. Oh, what that um that you did on on uh, Inside True Crime, just like uh, an interview that you did, or, or or just something, yeah, an interview that you that you had somebody in, and you were just like, "Fuck, wow." Um, have you? Well, you've talked to. Well, I was gonna say, you know, who tells a good story is uh that guy, uh, um, Tim. But I was thinking a lot of the ones like when I talk about, I'm trying to think. I can't. I can't see them. Can you scroll down? Yes. Can you scroll? Down think a of bit? all these things. You know, I just did a whole thing on, on, uh, well, all right. I just I'll did a whole you. thing. So, cause I, there is one I like. So Which you, one? you did one, it says, uh, how you survived, um, America's most wanted man. So how did you survive that? Oh, oh no, no. You mean, um, that's the ser I'm doing a whole series on my story. Like I've told like my personal story up to prison. I did it in 11 parts. Yeah, I see you have it in parts. Yeah, it's so, like, seven hours total. It's seven hours total? Guys are literally joining, like, they'll join my Patreon just to watch the whole thing because I'm breaking it up because they don't want to, they want to sit down in one thing. And I had this one guy go, I just listened to seven straight fucking hours of this thing. It's amazing. And it's your entire story, It's the right? whole story. Yeah, that, that's, well, there it is. That's the best one you put out since, since you've been in here. I, yeah, it's you, pretty you good. You got to do just you. You always do all these other people. You got to do just you. You're you're the haymaker out of all this shit. Do you have a Patreon? No. Nah. Bro, you got to do Patreon. I keep hearing about this Patreon. I, I don't <laughs> even know what the. F <laughs> I don't even Patreon. fucking know. I I don't know what. It, I don't even is, run it. Isn't it? Colby like runs the whole isn't thing. It like all political shit. Patreon? I don't fucking. No, know. it's people can support you. Like if somebody likes your channel, and they're like, I like what this guy is. This guy does. They can. They can say, you know what, every, you know, they'll go. You say, yeah, I have a Patreon. They'll go to your Patreon, and you could have like different tiers, and you know, you can say, look at the first tier for and maybe you charge ten bucks. A lot of guys charge three bucks, seven bucks, and what happens is every month somebody pays you ten bucks. Why? Just because they want to. They want to support you. Yeah, stuttering John was saying guys are making ten, twenty grand on there. Guys are making thirty and forty. I'm not. I mean, I just started pushing it a few months ago, but I'm making like a, is, a mine's over a thousand dollars. Good. Fuck. So, you know, and I have three different tiers, uh, like one for 10 bucks. Guys are like, oh, you got to do them for like $3, $7. No, no. Listen, if, if you can't afford $10, then you don't need to donate any money at all. Like that, that, like, honestly, I mean, you've got bigger issues. So don't give me anything. So it, the first one's $10. The next one's 50 For 50 bucks, I give them 
advanced access to full videos. Like they get the full videos weeks before anybody else. And then I think for the third tier, which is like 125 bucks, every month I give people a different con man painting. I, I, so every month That's I get it. That's it's, good. I sh- and, I, and when I was coming here, I thought, fuck, I should have brought one of the con man paintings. Yeah. You would love the con. I've done like, I've done uh, uh, Charles Ponzi. I did Victor uh, Lussing. Is it on your Instagram? I did, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I did. Those are all mine. I, I got two more that I'm doing for because I, I need to give them out this coming month. That's what you should do. Do those fucking paintings. They're awesome. You'll make a killing. This but, guy, Scott, this guy can paint like you wouldn't even believe. Well, and think about it too. If the you two keep, things he could do is fraud, paint, and true crime, or three things. Yeah. <laughs> if you think about it, if you if somebody joined the Patreon and every month they got one of these paintings, listen, after a few months, you got a whole wall of all these con men. But, and the person who gets the painting, somebody comes over to the house. Where the fuck did you get that? Right. Oh, they, I got that from uh, the There's box. another, Boom. there's another sale, sub. Sale, 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 sale. Fuck yeah. sub, sale, sale. But I, I, so I just went to New York to be interviewed by an, another, another channel. And it's, it's just for this thing called uh, true crime, uh, my true crime story. So there's a, there's a, a series on, um, and it's called My True Crime. So yeah. So and I'm being interviewed for one of those. But she was interviewed first, right? She, well, no, she was interviewed on mine. So for my interview, she was also interviewed. Oh, okay. And I don't know. You were bitching about sitting around for a while. No, it was like it was like 15 hours. I was interviewed for like almost 15 hours. It, my back was killing me. Like you know, you you want to sit up straight. You want to have good posture. And they dress you out like they have a wardrobe guy come in with clothes that he's bought for me, and it, you try it on and. and and but then you're sitting there and you're wired up and you're sitting in the st- in the chair and it's you got to sit sh- you know you want to look like you have good posture and you sit up and it's forever. I mean, what the hell do they ask you for 15 hours? They ask me. I mean, they ask a lot of stuff. They'll ask over and over again because they need you to say it multiple different ways so that when they put put it together with their narration, it works. So you might tell the same story three or four times. So the story might be five minutes long, but by the time you're done. You know, you've told the same story for 30, 45 minutes and they have to continually change the media cards. So they'll change it and then they have to go back and look at it and they have to do some things. So you Damn. every they're every using media cards. Right, wow. Every 20 minutes or 30 minutes, they have to like they're like, oh, OK, we got to change it or there's two minutes left or whatever. And then they the do fuck? it. Wow. It's, it's kind of interesting. I had uh, Kaylin Chasen last night. And he was with Corn and a bunch of other bands. And he was saying like that kind of too, where w- when they would do like the hook, they would do it 10 times. And then they would find the one that matches the initial hook. So, right. you know, like in the timeline, yeah, they would do the hook, hook until they got the one that matched the initial to layer it. So kind of like that. So it was fucking crazy. So they, yeah. they do it so they get the exact. Oh, it'll, it'll be flawless when it's done. Yeah. Like they know, they know what they're doing. Yeah, they'll edit the fuck out of it and it'll be... Fifteen I, hours will be what twenty minutes of of tape. You know the difference is you know the difference between me editing something and a professional editing it. Like I had a film student that's editing some some of the shorts for Inside the Darkness, and he sent me some of those. And it's like, oh wow! As soon as you see it, like a professional, you realize, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, I thought I did. Yeah, like you just know how we know how to blade. Right. I, uh, I, I, yeah, you know? I, I stuck that there, and it played, and it actually the beat went along with it. And I thought, oh wow, I'm amazing. And then you see somebody who really knows what they're doing. You're like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm an idiot. Yeah, that uh, pretty much. Had, I thought I had final cut down. I was like, shit, I got this down. And then when I needed something, I'm like, uh, Rob, yeah. uh, I have no idea what I'm doing right now. I hit a button, and it's all fucked up. Uh, what do I do? <laughs> So you realize really fast, just because you can get to finish it with the software doesn't mean you know no. there's too many no. too many clicking buttons and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, it's uh yeah, every time I do so well, you know, it's funny the guy uh I did a, I'm doing a, a, a podcast with a, a company about a Marcus Shrinker story, about another story I wrote, and we did this whole podcast and they're editing it right now and they keep saying to me do you want to be a part of the editing process? Like, do you want us to send you this? I'm like, hell no. Like I would, it would be horrible to have to go through that. You know, I like, I, cause to me, I'd be like, oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. That's interesting. And I'd have six hours of something. 
where they'll take it and take the best of it and turn it into an They're hour episode. Yeah. And then, you know, like to me, that's hard to pick what I think is is relevant. And somebody has to make that decision, and that's an anguishing decision to make. And I've, I'll put that on them. Where is uh, where is Marcus Shrinker at? Where's he at now? He lives in uh, so I want to say somewhere in the in uh, Florida, the peninsula up in fucking crazy near Tallahassee. Wow, that's where he's at. Um, up there somewhere, yeah. He owns some company. He's he's just a dirt bag. Guy's just a dirt bag. Listen, and this is going to be a great episode. Like they're I think they're breaking it up into probably five to eight different episodes about me writing his book and he is so fucking cocky too he's such a he's such he, an, an he's arrogant, way worse than you w- listen i mean and he makes a, you look like a fucking angel well and he's a pathological liar like the problem is he's just a blatant liar he'll say anything like the first when they called him to interview him immediately he said um if you do anything on me, oh, well, you'll be talking to my lawyer. And when, my, when I get done with you, start threatening them. First of all, you don't have a lawyer, okay? You don't have anybody that's going to sue them because they're not saying anything that's not true. And this is the same thing he said when Forbes magazine contacted him. When, like, I know several other companies that have contacted him because I've, I've been interviewed several times for, by production companies about the book I wrote on him. And for people that don't know who he is. He's a guy, him. Mike Marcus Shrinker, during 2008... During the financial crisis, he had been running a Ponzi scheme. I mean, it's a little more complicated than that, but he'd been running he'd been running several scams. He owned a wealth management company where he he invested people's money, and what he and he but he was also running basically a Ponzi scheme. And so the Indiana Security and Exchange Commission came to arrest him. Like they'd already raided his office, so you know you're getting arrested. And he took out his private aircraft. He had a Piper Meridian. He also had a couple of, he was a stunt driver, stunt plane uh, pilot also. But he took out a Piper Meridian and he flew it to Florida. And on his way there over Alabama, he called in a distress signal and said, uh, I'm hitting, I'm hitting turbulence. I'm hitting turbulence. Oh, my, he said, oh, my, my, um, it's okay. It's all right. He said, he goes, oh, he is my, my, my windshield spider cracking, uh, you know, my windshield imploded. I'm bleeding. I'm bleeding. Like, and you know, they're saying like, you know, get, dive, dive, get, go down or we're, we're clearing the runway where we're go to this airport. And, you know, he's like, ah, oh, oh. and then he puts on a parachute, opens the hatch and jumps out of the plane. <laughs> and then he thinks the plane's going to go out over the Gulf and crash. And he figures it'll crash. The wind, front windshield will blow out. And they'll think my body washed away. But because he's an idiot, he doesn't take into account that when he opens the back of the plane and the it, the drag burns off all the fuel <laughs> and his plane doesn't go out of the Gulf, it just lands in like a swamp wooded area. <laughs> and then going through the, the trees in the wooded area, it rips off the wings, the tail, <laughs> the, the rudders, the, the, the everything. But the windshield, it which didn't he didn't even <laughs> scratch the wind, which he had just said had imploded. So as soon as they, and, and then of course the back plane is open, you know, the doors are open. So they get there like, gee, doors are open, windshield's fine, the uh, po- the, the the parachute's missing. I think maybe he jumped out. <laughs> maybe. What do you think? I mean, the two fat- the back fucking doors open. Yeah, windshield's not broken. Uh-uh. Yeah, he's been indicted by the. Uh, <laughs> he's been indicted and about to be arrested. So the two fat deb- deputies <laughs> figured the whole case out within about thirty seconds of actually finding the plane. They're like easy day today, baby. Yeah. I'm coming home early. Yeah, how long you think this idiot will last? Like, yeah, you can figure we'll have him in a week. Yeah. So three days later, they found him at a at a KOA count, uh, campsite. Um. <laughs> And uh, so I wrote a book about him because I was incarcerated with him and I wrote this book. And uh, and so there's it's gotten, you know, he actually got it taken down. He he wrote something to Amazon and got it taken down. I, was, I still haven't been able to get it back up on Amazon and I can get it on several several other places. I can put it up. I just haven't done it yet. I ordered maybe 50 copies. And when people ask me for them, I mail them a copy. But other than that, I'm just kind of waiting for these programs to come out, and then I'll go ahead and push it, push it, and put it back up. Are you allowed to talk about uh, the UK conversation? Um, I mean, I, I don't, I won't get specific, but the, yeah. I'm basically trying. 
well, not trying. I was contacted. I've been contacted by, when I first got out of prison, I was contacted by a bunch of people about, a bunch of production companies contacted me about doing my personal story. And I was afraid that I didn't want to do my personal story because I thought then you end up being this one person. For instance, Jordan Belfort. You know, Jordan Belfort at one point wanted to become a, a producer and do other people's stories, right? Like he wanted to produce a TV show about other con men. And he tried to pitch it to a bunch of different production companies. And, you know, nobody took him seriously because they're like, oh, you're the Wolf of Wall Street. Like they couldn't get past that. You get stereotype, right? And so I thought if I end up doing a story about me, people are only going to see me as that person. So I'm going to try and get some of my other stories done first and I'll learn the process and then eventually I'll do my story. Well, I've got several of my, my true crime stories that I wrote being turned into documentaries and I'm getting traction on a few others. So I thought, so at the same time, I kind of, you know, what that was happening, I, I finally got to the point where I was like, you know, I might as well do, you know, my, my YouTube channel is starting to kind of take traction and I thought you know what I need to do I needed to go ahead and just I need to just go ahead and do a um uh, let someone do a documentary and the same moment I got contacted by three or four different places over the, within a month or so and this one company out of the UK they contacted me and I talked to them, well I talked to them several times I talked to a few other ones too but this one company they've done a lot of stuff they have a great in a great relationship with uh, Netflix um, and uh, Apple and Amazon and I thought, you know, um, I'm going to go ahead and, and and talk to them about it and take take that their proposal more seriously. And I was also working with a company called Wiseful Productions about the same thing about doing a a documentary on me. The problem with them is they've got like six projects in the work, and it's just small group of people. And they're like, you know, like no, no, we're going to get to yours. We're going to. It was like, look. Be a decade. When? Yeah, they, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You're Cut lucky. That if, one. You're lucky. Yeah. So I talked to the main guy, Henry, and Henry's like, "Look, let's go with them. You're right. I, we, we, I can't, I can't ask you to wait anymore. So I'll, I'll try and I'll help you, um, you know, navigate the situation to make sure everything's on the up and up. And so, you know, he went through all these different ones. He's like, "Look, they, they're all basically serious. He's like, but this one stands out as one that's more serious and a less tabloidish." Because a lot of them will turn it, do a tabloid slash and burn thing on you and trash you. Just trash and he's like, these people it. seem to be more interested in just like what the story is. Yeah. Not, and that's not what really I want. like Matt Cox, more the story and the entertainment of the story. Right? right. Well, no, they just don't twist it. Like they're just like, look, this is what happened. Like you figure out like we're going to tell you what happened. You decide what, what, you know, where other like a tabloid will try and kind of coax oh, you yeah. in like exactly. lead you like yeah. look he's a horrible person he did this and this right. and, and then they'll only talk to bad people that have bad things to say about you and then by the end of the the episode you're like oh this guy's a total scumbag basically american greed exactly or you can talk to a, a, a gamut of people that were involved in the scam and then at the end you're like okay well here's what happened he did this and this and this and it's more like news and then it's like if you decide at the end of it like hey He's a horrible person, fine. Or, you know what? He was in a bad situation. This is the cho choices he made. You know, or maybe you still decide, wow, he's just a fucking total scumbag. Like, okay, I got that. But at least let's do it based on what really happened. And this this place seems like that company. Hopefully it works out. If it's not them, it'll be somebody. It's, it'll be it's, somebody. It's a great story, yeah. yeah. Just be careful and you're doing the right thing. Yeah, and, it'll be and somebody. And you've done the right thing this whole time with, with that, getting other shit out because you're already kind of looked at as the mortgage fraud guy. Yeah. You yeah. have a documentary out. I mean. Yeah. Well, oh yeah. I was gonna, you, you, and the commercials. And the commercials. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of the commercials, can you pull up tab five? Are you, I don't, you, how do you, man, you really, listen, like, listen, listen, I do no prep work. Listen, listen. I, I obviously I can't sleep, so I'm up this, late. This is the difference between running your thing, your, your podcast out of your house and actually being <laughs> professional. So. But I can't sleep, right? So I'm always up to three or four. Every single night I see that. Are they paying you per cur no, per time they no, run out? They paid me one. They, they paid, paid me you one time. Well, I've done different. I've every time I fly out, they pay me for for it. So I've been paid twice, but they also pay me every month because I do, um, kind of like continuing 
I want to say continuing education, but I basically I'm constantly being interviewed by local um, local news stations or articles. Like they have a PR person, so every once in a while they'll say, "Hey, would you mind?" Not it's usually a couple times a month, and so every time I I do one of those. You know, I get paid. They pay me for that because I'm continually pushing their product by being interviewed and talking about, you know, every, title fraud. Every night I hear you. Now, let me ask you this. What do you think? I, I'm dying to know because I see that my pillow guy every two fucking seconds. I don't know what the fuck he's selling on the side to pay for all those commercials. But I looked it up because uh, I was thinking about having him in. I was I was thinking about it. You know that I think it's Walmart or somebody just pulled all of his oh, pillows. Oh, shit. Yeah. Wow. What a... But then he came back. He, oh, they, I, they yeah. fixed it? Yeah, they fixed it. I don't know why they pulled it, but they did. But he spent $426 million on commercials in 2020. I don't know what he did in 21, but it was a fucking... That's... Think how many times that fucking commercial plays. Right. What do you think LifeLock pays to put their commercial on 50 times on Fox or CNN or whatever one? What do you think they I, pay for I, that? I have no time? idea. I don't know what they, what they even charge for something like that. Scott, what do you think... Uh, 60 second commercial cost on Fox. I'm sure it depends on what kind of time of day, too, right? Like average. I don't know, a couple hundred thousand. Oh, no. It's got to be less than that. Yeah. Come on, 20, 30,000, yeah. maybe. Less. It's got to be less than that. Well, it depends on what show you're on. Yeah, if you're so, on yeah, NFL, and what time? NFL football, and, then it's going to be, you know. Yeah, it's millions then. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah, you usually come on. Um, when they rerun the Hannity, so like when you come on the second time on there, I, I see you pop up. But let's oh, take I, a, you got to see. It. Listen, now, I, every day somebody sends me something saying, "I just saw you on." Now let me build this up a little bit. This is the biggest fucking mortgage fraud guy ever in the U.S., and he gets out and he's doing a fucking commercial with Newt Gingrich and tell him what Newt Gingrich said to you uh, <laughs> when he, he was with them. He, <laughs> he was asking me. Uh, he said, "Do you feel he is so um." He says, do you feel bad about about um? Do you feel bad about this? And I went no. And he goes, what he goes, he goes why not? And I said, I go a shark doesn't concern himself with the opinions of his prey. And he <laughs> just was like, game, right? you could listen. He the look on his face, you could tell he glanced around at like his security people, and he I you I know he was thinking, how did I get in the room with this guy? <laughs> like. Who let me and who let this guy in the room with me? I think I asked you before, but did he know that he was going to be doing this commercial with you? I don't think he realized. I don't think he knew that. Or until, he realized who you were, maybe. No, it, until there was like a meet and greet, <laughs> and they asked. I got there, and I asked, and they were like, "Hey, Newt's already here. Uh, we'd like to in introduce you." So at the time when I was there, they explained, "You're going to be interviewing Mr. Cox," and he was like, "Oh, okay." And what did? What did, <laughs> why, why? What did Mr. Cox do? And, I, and they told him, and and you know, well, he's this and that and this. And then I said, yeah, I have this and this and this. And I started rambling it off, you know. And his security guys took he's a step like, closer. No, you're disgusting. <laughs> and he just, yeah, he he didn't look like I, you know, I've seen Newt Gingrich, you know, before. You know, when I grew up, he was Speaker of the House. He had a great sense of humor. You know, he was a funny guy. Um, yeah, he didn't seem like he found it comical at all <laughs> at all right let's, let's play a little bit of it. even though i see it every fucking night hit play on this scott i still can't believe the fbi it. calls title and there. mortgage fraud the fastest growing white <laughs> you know he's like in his 70s hurt. super sharp he looks good for 70 too which is why many criminals aren't going after credit cards they're stealing home titles every county clerk knows about this crime and it's easier than you think Nobody thinks that I can take their house. Nobody thinks that I can take their house and borrow against the house. No, it's it's in my name. Or he would. Have How many times did they make you do that take? They would call me. You know, what is calling you? I mean, you're living in a delusion. Bro, that's just a candid interview. I didn't retake that. That was just one take. Yeah. Cyber criminals who are stealing homes like you. But they did. It was a long interview. To 26 years in federal prison. For bank fraud, wire fraud, government <laughs> document fraud. What else fraud? The United States government, money laundering, social security fraud. I committed fraud <laughs> involving 109 houses in the Tampa Bay area. How many properties did I falsely buy or acquire in multiple names and borrow against? I mean, it's around 150. One of the things I was doing. Was that actually one of the houses? No. no. B-roll. And B then transferring the deeds out of their name into fake people's names and borrowing against their house. So you as the homeowner think you still own a house. 
Three months later, you start getting foreclosure notices and you realize you've got four mortgages on your house. You summarized that really quick there. <laughs> they, that's, yeah, they cut that up. Yeah, that's, they chopped that. Right? There's just good. It's just good editing. Good editing, yeah. Your signature, like, you know, the signature doesn't match on the warranty deed or the signature doesn't match on this. Well, nobody's nobody's checking any of these things. Nobody's checking for the notary stamps. You know what I mean? Notary stamps. Are things any different now? Really? No. Same Nothing. shit. I love guys that are like, you can't do this now. You're the hell I can. It's easier now than than ever. Now you don't have to go to the closing. They do it remotely. Your That's home's right. title. You have to legally prove you own it. All right, we're good. Now, we're now I don't even I wouldn't even have to go downtown to record the document. You can scan the document. You can uh, you can scan the document, email it to them with. And all you have to do is click the button that says it's a certified copy. So I don't even need a, a, an original document. And you, you can pay online with a, like a, a green dot card or, or, you know, one of these prepaid credit cards, a fake a fake email address. Like you, I don't even have to go. In, I used to have to go into the courthouse. Now you can do everything online. And then the closing, I can close online with a uh, an online notary. They say, oh, hold up your ID. Is that you? Okay, good. Like, they don't even physically touch like, you. don't ID. even have to be at the closing anymore? No. Oh, shit. Well, oh, it's, co it's, COVID helped out uh, the fraudsters. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's listen, not just that. There are companies out there, like, uh, I think it's one called, it's like Ali, not Ali, it's like Alibaba. Per, um, investment group or something where they're out of New York and they're buying houses all over. You know, there's these huge companies that are buying houses all over the United States. They never go. They send an appraiser out to do a drive-by review. So you're telling me that the appraiser doesn't even have to necessarily go in the house and some company that's never seen your house will send out an appraiser and buy your house, not at full market value, but let's say they bar, buy it at 80% or 90%. Man, I could go rent a house satisfy the loans on it, transfer the deed into some fake identity that I know, call that company or four of those companies and all close on that same, that house the same day, never go to one closing in person, show them a fake ID that wouldn't pass, you know, the, the, the test, you know, show it to well, them on, on the scanner. It would, yeah, right? They would notarize it. And then I could have that money like, oh, do you want us to mail you the money or zell it to you? Zell it to me. Zell it to accounts that you've opened. Like It's so easy now to, to run my scam. My scam has turned into a a 60 to 90 day, sorry, a 30 to 90 day scam. It, they've turned it into a two week scam where you, where I used to have to go in the bank and go into the, the mortgage company and go in all these different places. Now I don't ever have to leave Starbucks. You don't even have to leave the house. You could do it all from home. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't want them to get my IP well, now, address. I'd have to use a socket server. Yeah. Oh, there's plenty of them. Yeah. There's plenty of those if ever yeah. made it. All right. So, so, but yeah, it's that bad. Now, there's nobody better to ask about this. The housing market. What are you seeing? Now, the house is like a house that was 400K is now 600K. And then they're coming in with a cash buy, 50,000 over. Right. Okay. In some now, areas, right, 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 yeah, right, right. Right. So, what is, what do you think is where? When did that start? Where do you see that starting? Where the housing market just went fucking through the moon? Well, I mean, even before COVID, it was starting it was, to. Go it was right. already going up. Yeah. Like it was already been, been up for a and year. Why or two. is that? It was just more money in the system. There were just more people at that time. the The interest rates were, you know, next to nothing. Like, you know, they were boosting the economy. And, and so, and then COVID happened. And so you would think it would have started to take a, a dive, but it had the opposite effect because they kept the interest rates low and they dumped all that money into, back into the economy. So it just continued to rise and it's continued to rise. And now everybody's gone back to work or most people have gone back to work and it, it continued to rise. You know, also that then gave it another boost. And then what's happened now where there was no inventory of houses now in the last few months, the inventory has started to blow up. Like people aren't buying like they were buying. There's a ton of houses. Like people aren't paying fifty thousand or twenty thousand. They're not. They're not making bids on houses more than the asking price. Like it's, oh, here they are. Well, I'm just saying. Well, yeah. this is Palm Beach. So right, right here, I, I mean, all day long, like five people that, that like friends around here. Five people. My one friend went and bought a fucking townhouse. 
a year ago it was five forty. Right. It was seven twenty for a fucking townhouse. Cash buyer comes in, buys it seven seventy. Okay. That's, well, and I can give you example after example. That I mean, that's what's going on in Palm Beach here. I mean, I'm I'm just saying that I have friends that are in the real estate industry, and they're saying that the in there's now starting to become more and more inventory. Like it's slowing down. So does that mean it will level out the prices, or do you well, think these are the new standard prices? In other words, no. I think the economy is about to start headed downhill. Okay. So, do you see recession or do you see crash? No, I see like depression, like you know, oh, like, depression, like, depression. like like bad, like worse than a recession, worse. You really? Know. Yeah. I mean, I, I I can't imagine they've dumped so much money. What is it? Eighty or ninety percent of all the money that's ever been produced has been produced in the last two years. There's that much money has been that's ever been produced since 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 the Fed's been printing money. Wow. I mean, there's just so much money in circulation. Like the, and you've seen inflation. Like what, here's the problem is when you have money, you don't notice inflation that much, you know, because the difference between paying $3 and 50 cents for, you know, a, a TV dinner and paying $4 and 10 cents, like that doesn't mean much to, to somebody who, you know, they don't really notice that gas went up, that I used to pay $35 and now I'm paying 50. They're like, they're like, eh, went up a little 15. bit. Like, that's not a big deal. But to somebody who's barely making their bills every month and has three kids and works at Walmart, that's a 20% increase in half their budget. I mean, it that's that's rough. And it's going up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The inflation is, is going up. Houses, people aren't buying houses anymore. I mean, I'd say, you know, the stock market's crashing you know um crypto is crashing i mean everything is crashing so to think that there's no trickle down that's that's insanity and it's not like the stock market had a bad couple of days no it crashed it's been going weeks <clears throat> down weeks. I, I mean to me i mean it's just been right. getting hammered in, in another month or two you know that spills over to the banks not wanting to lend not wanting to give credit lines and lend money to businesses and not wanting to cover payroll and you know for you know receivables and then they start laying people off and then businesses start closing and then that's a, a cascading effect it's like it's like um in flint michigan when they closed you know this was 20 years ago you know people were like uh, i think it was was it gm or ford or somebody and they were closing a factory and they were like you know it's like it was like 15,000 people or something i forget the exact amount and they were saying okay well it's 15,000 people but there's like a hundred thousand people in that little town. Like it's only fifteen thousand jobs. It's like no, 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 no. For every one of those guys that lose a job, there's three people that support that person. So it's you know that like that person now, those fifteen thousand people without them, that means that the restaurant down the street's going to close, and this this hotel will close, and this real estate agent will go under, and this person that does drywall to do new houses, and it's a, and then for every person that supports them, like it's a community. So that fifteen thousand dollar or fifteen thousand people help support another forty five thousand. And when those forty five thousand people, now that's half the fucking town. When half the town goes, the entire town's wiped out. Like it's a massive it, it, domino it's a massive, effect. Right, right, right. It's massive. Okay, so over the next year, what do you see happening step by step? So, so right now, you're you're saying they're out of inventory overall kind of and no no i'm saying that there is more more inventory, inventory. people are not buying I keep houses here Sorry. okay yeah. people are not buying houses like they were okay now what happened what's the next stage that happens where's the real wait where's the uh the realtor what, what, what rob what's his name uh not rob um glenn yeah the real estate guy that used well, to well he's doing cartwheels right now because in palm beach he's getting oh yeah, yeah, yeah okay, he's yeah. killing shit i mean he's getting three hundred thousand over asking asking price all day long um yeah. Yeah, I I would say, I would say, you know, I'd say in three months, it you start to hear really bad. Like you're already hearing, you know, ripples. But I'd say in three months from now, things are bad. And in six months, I think that you know, house prices start to drop dramatically. I mean, and I'd then, be investing in rooming houses right now if I was but, people. I'd be buy, I'd still be buying single family houses and just turning them into rooming houses because people are going to be losing their jobs. So when you say depression. What is what does that, that mean? Is that thirty percent uh, where uh, uh, like twenty percent or thirty percent of the popula of the uh, working population is like out of work? I don't know. I don't know. It's, yeah. it's it's up there. It's up there. So a, a depression is is considered a certain percentage of people out of work. 
Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah, can, you can, can you, you want to pull that? it up? Like, yeah. I, I don't know the exact yeah. amount, but yeah. Yeah, I'll Google it. There's actually kind of a rough statistic. I don't think it's a hard number, but it's it's got to be pretty. It's, yeah, put in, um, well, how would you word that? Uh, what is the depression? Yeah. 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 What, 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 what yeah, is what. Uh, considered we've... a depression. Right. Yeah. It's like you said, it's probably the percentage. Now, what's more important? The percentage on the loans or the mortgage rates going down so mean, like because they work together right so like so the i think the interest right now is what like six percent is something insane right like if i go to get a loan for a house it's like six percent yeah they're trying so, so i don't know what it is but it, 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 it they raised it they it almost doubled what they so if that would go back down to say three is that more important so like if you're trying to get the housing, housing it helps, market back but it's down, not, it, it's, it's not like, it, they only have so much control, like they can raise it and try and slow it down, but they should have raised interest rates, you know, like a year and a half when they saw that the economy was doing, was booming and they were dumping all that money. They should have dumped less money in and they should have raised the interest rates and said, they were like, well, we need to stimulate the economy. Well, once you saw that it, it, it wasn't necessary, you know, you started paying people to stay home. And they're buying houses. And then they get used to fucking staying home, and then they're like, "Oh, okay. Well, right, I don't want to go back to work." Bad working at home. I have my refrigerator right here, my food right here. Okay, what do we got here? Uh, an economic depression is a period of sharp and sustained decline in economy activity. Blah blah blah. I'm looking at percentage. Uh, ten percent drop in GDP and around twenty. There you go. Twenty percent. Twenty percent unemployment. So 10% drop GDP, 20% unemployment. That doesn't even seem bad. <laughs> I, I, I think we're fucking almost there now. I mean, the, <laughs> wow. That doesn't even Fuck. seem bad, right? So you, then it says recession versus depression. Yeah. Down there. I don't know. Yeah. What that, uh, read that, Matt. You got a good voice. Hell no, I don't. I can't read that, bro. One, I can't see it. Oh, that's I'd right. Really you got fucking, uh, uh, yeah, reset, uh, U.S. National Bank, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, they're they're just talking about it before, but yeah, so shh, that's nothing. I thought it was a, would be a lot higher than that, right? What are you reading? Um, I, it was just uh, depression uh, indicators. That's all. But yeah, it's same basically same thing. It's the uh, the ten percent and the twenty uh, percent unemployment. Oh yeah, under uh, economic depression indicators, yeah, there's no guarantee guaranteed way to predict when an economy recession will turn into a depression, but there are several common warning signs that a recession may be around the corner. One of the most common indicators of a recession is when yield on 10-year U.S. Treasury bonds drops below the yield on two-year Treasury bonds. What the fuck does that mean? I mean, just a matter of buying Treasury bonds. Like, is it short-term or long-term? And then, uh, I guess, strategies to prevent an economic depression, which we're doing everything the other way. The U.S. hasn't experienced an economic depression since 1930. Economists and government officials learned from the Great Depression. Yeah. And the government now employs several key defense strategies to prevent recessions from transitioning to depression. Yeah. Well, uh, I think they missed that one. Yeah, well. So you think within 6 to 12 months we're in a depression? Yeah, I, th I think that's the. I think it's headed that way. At the very least, a, a recession, right? I mean, it would have to be. Now, can you think of any way that it, it could to get out of that? N no, I mean, I'm not an econ. The economists don't know. Like guys, you know, with master's degrees don't don't have a clue. You know, so I, um, what you know, the guy in the big short, the guy who uh, ran a, a like a think tank, an invest, an investment firm where he had predicted what was going on. Yeah. Um, I forget, uh, I think Kevin Bayo, no, Kevin Bayo, I forget who plays him. Anyway, um, that guy now, I forget his name, but he's running around saying, well, bro, like the sky is falling. He's like, you have no idea what's coming. You have no idea. And this is a guy, by the way, you know, one of the things that happened with him after the the big short came out and people were talking to him and they were like, what is, what would you put your money in? And he, one of the things he was saying was like farms and water. And and now that was seven. So that movie came out like five or six years ago. And what right now is massively being purchased and making tons of money. Anybody who put was is putting their money into water and farms. Like I think isn't um, isn't Bill uh, is it Bill Gates? Isn't Bill Gates yeah. one of the largest owners of farms? 
I, I know and, he's huge with the green shit. No, no, he's he's he owns like a ton of farmland. Land and right that now. too. Yeah, he's, like tons of because think about it. He if you know there's one thing we're not running we're not gonna ever not need, and that's food. And so he's bought a ton of farms. Like that's a big thing. That water water rights the right to drill for water like these are these are things that we're running out of well I mean, at least water so that's huge and this guy he was predicting that he was putting all of his clients money into that so that and that shot up through the roof now he's saying look you're we're, this is this is going to be bad this is going to be a great this is going to make the 2008 financial crisis look like nothing like 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 a fucking drop like a uh, like a month of hell and a, like a joke right right um, well, you know, when, like you said, when you see a guy like Bill Gates taking his money and investing in shit like that, now you know he knows more than we know, obviously, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, so when he's doing something like that, he's prepping for something. Yeah. He's not just buying fucking places to drill for fucking oil for, or uh, not even water for his health. Right. Well, you know, you know what's funny about, um, I forgot, I forget that guy's name. He's Which one is it? Oh, God. The, he's an older guy. Bob he's, Dole? No, no, this is an older guy who does, he does a, he yells all the time. He does investments. Oh, Pena. Yes. Dan Pena, yes. my man. I love Have the you, billion dollar man. I, billion dollar man. I love Dan Pena. He's the guy. <laughs> you ever see him? Oh my oh, fucking God. He's, God. he's the best. You know, he's got this thing on a global warming I, <laughs> where, he, where he says, he's like, it's bullshit. And it's like, and this woman's like, no, that's not true. And he's like, you know how I know it's true? How I know there is no such thing. He's like, that's, that's it. No, he's, well, he's saying, He's saying, yes, it's happening. Like, I agree there's global warming, but that's been going on with or without us. Forever. Are we helping it uh, es uh, escalate a little bit faster than normal? Maybe. No real way. We're not positive of that. And there's some scientists say yes, some say no. Um, but, you know, so it, are we helping? Maybe a little bit. Maybe we're accelerating it by a few years, maybe a decade, but it's still happening with us, with or without us. Um, it's just like, you know, animals going extinct. Animals have been going extinct way before we came along like that just is kind of a i'm not saying let's kill them kill off species but i'm saying it happens naturally also anyway he does this whole thing he's like you know how i know it's bullshit that 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 the whole that we're going to be underwater and there's global warming and and, <laughs> they got, and they're like you know no how he's like because banks lend mortgages at 30 and 40 years right they do investing on on 30 and 40 year um terms He's like, no banks are saying, sorry, we can't lend in Florida because it'll be underwater in 20 years. No. He's, they're not doing that at all. Remember, they actually had that on the news, like the local news that, you know, Florida might be underwater in 10 years, 20 years. And I agree. You know, you know, when I heard it, I heard it when I was 11 or 12 years old about global warming and I was in school. I remember by the year 2000, half of Florida was going to be gone. Yeah. And they're, I still, mean, and they're still talking about it now. Yeah. Like, I get it. And then it turned into climate change. Look, I'm not saying that there's no credible evidence that it's happening, but... It's happening, but it's... It's happening it's anyway. evolution. It's evolution. It's happened a hundred gazillion times. If you go back and look, and I did, and obviously you did too, or whatever, you can look. It It's a cycle that repeats itself. It right. always repeats itself. Yeah, there have been the fucking ice, ice ages. Ice ages, the, the fucking Alaska, all that shit melts. Then it comes back up. It just happens. Right. You know? What were your thoughts on uh, Elon buying uh, Twitter? And then the funniest Wouldn't thing- Wouldn't that be great? Did It, it, it didn't close, did it? It's on hold because they tried to sell for $46.2 which That's they are right. so fucking stupid. That's right, because they had a bunch of fake accounts right, or something? So, so, yeah. So what had happened was- he, you know, it's 46.2. He gets it, first they wanted 50 something. He gets it down to 46.2. He says, okay, I'll buy it. As if he didn't already know what the next play was. Right. So then he buys it. So now, or, you know, he says he's going to buy it. Now they're scrambling because he gets the source code. The source code is all the shit they've done since they've opened that. Everything. Every person they shadow banned. That's why all of a sudden people were getting like 100,000 followers right. out of nowhere because they're quick. They're trying to fix all the. Yeah. Okay. Manipulation. So now, while they're trying to fix it in his back pocket, he knows that fifty percent or forty percent of the active users on Twitter are robots. So then he goes to the what is it the SEC? Would that be in the stock market? SEC. Right? Yeah. So he goes to the SEC and says, "Hey, this is inflated. Yeah. This is proof. You know, there's thirty percent bots. Yeah. So now the buy is on hold and they're investigating it and." I think three days ago, Twitter admitted that 30% were bots. 
So now, now so you're just fluffing your numbers. Yep. So now, now he's making the curveball in to renegotiate yeah. to yeah. get it down to under twenty six. Right. Because now you just tried to lie to him. Right. Now, you got to be one fucking dumb company to try to play him. Yeah. If yeah. he's not an alien, which he might be, <laughs> he's for sure the smartest fucking guy on the planet, in my opinion. You, you know what's funny is, uh, and you're gonna try to play him with 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 software. Elon Musk, are you nuts? And he's not gonna catch you. He went in there with that forty six and was like. Sure, take the forty six, and he sits and he waits because he knows he can't take it over for six months. Right. right. Let me just see exactly how many fucking robots you have. Oh, I thought it was twenty five percent. You have thirty. Wow, I'm gonna get this bitch for twenty billion. I'm gonna go right to the SEC. Now Twitter has to fucking scramble like hell unless they want a gazillion fines. You know. Right. Because they lied in the stock. So then all those people that bought Twitter, thinking that it's worth forty six billion. And has three million, or however, you know, thirty million active users. Really, it might have ten million active users. So now you just f- fuck the stockholders. Now I don't know what they do about that. I mean, you would think the heads would roll that they would come in and find them, or you know, indict people or whatever. You know, if it's you know, it's it's manipulation, it's stock manipulation, right? Like, isn't Twitter? Uh, are they privately owned or are they? Um, no, 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 they're. They're pr- well. No. If there's a publicly traded company, publicly then traded it is company. the. That's probably why yeah. went to the SEC. I don't know. Yeah, because Jack Dorsey was running it, and in my belief, I think Jack Dorsey wanted it pretty much. I think he wanted it uncensored, and then maybe like one side of it censored, another side of it uncensored. But then the board that came in, I just think fucked him, because now now, Elon and uh, Jack Dorsey or whatever, they're like buddy buddies. So now Dorsey, who invented Twitter, he can tell Elon all the ins and outs without even having control of the company. Now they come as a team in, and I bet you any money, Elon buys it, has Dorsey run it, and Elon kind of overlooks it and shit like that, and then Dorsey can run it the way he wanted it to. Because I really think he didn't want it to turn out the way it did, but you know, you go public, you have a board, you know, you're giving yeah, up yeah, you, percentage, you, you, you get you, voted out, you get these fucking yeah. people they, in that want to control everything. What are you gonna do? Right. right. They put up money and they or you know, they're all or even if they didn't, they're on the board. You know, they want the company to make money, so they're making decisions based on how they think what what they think will make money. Which is so funny because it's like for every person that's following all the rules and making money, there's always some guy who's breaking all the rules, you know, and making twice as much. You know, it's so, well, Dorsey actually walked away. He, I think he got sick and tired of the bullshit. You know, when they were really, it was maybe nine months ago, they were really like banning everybody, shadow banning everybody, you know, all kinds of crazy shit. He walked away. They're like, now that he's out of it and like there's no non disclosure, he was like, I walked away. Now it's up to the people on the outside to believe him or not because all the blame went to him. You know, everybody's like, Dorsey's an asshole. He fucked everything up. He went on interview, and like I said, him and Musk are hanging out left and right. And he said, look, that this is not how I wanted Twitter to be. Right. But I walked away because it was just getting too out of control, and nothing I said mattered. That's what he said. So I believe him. I think he takes it over, and I think, I think we'll have an uncensored Twitter. And I think the way that Elon is going to do it is great to get rid of the robots. So if you want that blue check, that bullshit blue check thing, yeah. you have to buy it. So now if you buy it, you have to pay for it with a car. Maybe it's five bucks, but I know you're real. Right. right? And you know I'm real because I paid five bucks, you paid five bucks. And then if it, you don't have a blue check and you didn't pay five bucks, who knows? You don't know if they're fucking real. If you don't have five bucks, then, you know. So what, you pay to have it yourself checked out. <clears throat> right. Like so you, so you would pay with a credit card in your name. Right. And then you would get the blue check. Yeah, but how, that's not hard to beat that. You you go to one of these prepaid you know, debit cards, like they don't necessarily know if they're- I mean, cars. maybe they'll want the ID too. Right. Or, or I you mean, could there, pay ways to ha- around. Yeah, or you could, I can understand having to pay to have your identity authenticated. Maybe that. In order to get the check, like I could see that, or to make sure that you're someone that, hey, I need to be, I, I need to be considered for a, you know, a blue check or whatever it is. I'm probably fucking this all up. It's blue check to do like a- An authentication. Authentication. Yeah. authentication yeah. Or, or yeah. and to see, I guess, because you got to think, even if they say, yeah, you're definitely who you are, but you're not worthy of, like, you're not at a status where we're concerned that people are taking, stealing your identity. Yeah, well, well he, he wants to wipe that. 
Yeah. So like the blue check is no longer about somebody stealing your identity on Twitter. The blue check would be this is definitely not a robot. Oh, 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 oh okay, 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 okay. So like, oh, did, okay, like, it means something else in Instagram. Instagram, yeah. it's like that you're you're a like a celebrity. Like this is this is their official, you know, because if you look up like you know if you look up like Jay Z, like there's 50 people that have Jay, uh, accounts that say they're Jay Z, but Jay Z has the check that says no, he, this is this is the guy. Right. So you know it's him. Right. While Twitter is saying, or nope. Elon's saying, we're going to get rid of all that shit. Because we need to make sure that these aren't robots. Right, because okay. we just you know, found out that 30% of the fucking company is. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, that, I think okay, it's a good sense. idea. Yeah. You know? And I just spelled that again. But yeah. I mean, I think it's a great idea. That's all right. I, listen, I, I, when I was doing that interview, they were getting me... Um, they were getting me a, like these big iced coffees from like Dunkin' Donuts and stuff, and I knocked one over. Like The guy had just gotten I took two sips, sat it down, and went to reach for it, and boom, just, I mean, gush, everywhere at my feet. And I was like, you know, they're, listen, what's great about flying up there is, like, you fly up there, and, like, there's somebody waiting. There's, like, a limo guy. It wasn't a limo. It was just a really nice car. But he's waiting with your name, and, you know, like, they totally cater to you. So, yeah. I oh, still, you had the whole, like, name thing as if like, oh, yeah, you off the airplane? Oh, it's, yeah. It's, yeah, it's got, it was the whole. <laughs> I remember it was, that shit. It was so, listen, so great because Jess has, Jess has never been, she's been on a plane before. Con Air was the first time she ever went on a plane. This is the second time. So you should see her. Like, she got the window seat. She's all looking out. She's like, and you know, the, the plane, you know, like when it makes noises, you know, they're, they're doing stuff. They're checking hydraulics and they're, and she's like, she's kind of like looking at me. And I'm like, it's fine. That's just the wheels. That's, they're just checking the hydraulics. That's, nope. That, look, look at the wing. You can see them doing the, that's the flaps. You know, you see the flaps go pop, pop. They're checking. I go, they're just checking stuff. She's like, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. And this no, is I'm a fine. girl who works on engines. Now, yeah, she see, works. You on... see him, right? His girlfriend works on engines and all kinds of. Explain, yeah, yeah. explain. Yeah, yeah. She works you're... on. She works on. Um, <laughs> I mean, she's a brilliant. she's a marine mechanic. She you works on boats. She would be with him. Oh, bro, she was a uh, uh, for six years. She was a <laughs> hog hunting tour guide. Takes guys out to hunt hogs. She was a uh, um, in the military. Oh wow. <laughs> she was. Um, yeah, she's a she's a, a, a tough chick. What yeah. she do with those fucking engines where she's climbing on top of shit? Like crazy shit. Um what do you mean? Show me that one picture. She was like up on top of Oh, she's always she's always climbing in the boat, you know, the uh, the inboard motors, like they're small, right? So she'll have to climb up inside the thing and she's in a boat in the engine compartment. And they always give her those because the other mechanic that works at the place where she works, I think there's two other guys. Can't fit. He can't fit in there. He's six foot two. <laughs> he's, she's like, she's like, he can't fit in there. She's like, so I got to get in there. And you know, and if it's a hundred degrees outside, what's it? How hot is it in that compartment with the engine? Oh, and she comes, she comes home, and I mean, just oil grease every <laughs> grease under her fingers. Like she'll come home and she'll walk in. And I'll be like, hey, baby, what's up? And she'll just look at me like she's like oil on her face. And oh, shit, like actually oil on her face. Oh, 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 yeah, in her hair, in her, and I'm like, oh wow, and she's like. I know. She's like, I feel horrible. I go, maybe we should take you outside. I could hose you down before you, <laughs> you know. And she she just gives me this look. She's like, she she's always tells beat me, your ass one of these days. Oh, she's right? done it many times. She always she tells me she's like, she goes, you live, and I go, God, are, are you okay? I said, you look hot. She goes, it's a hundred degrees outside, and I'm like, is it? I'm like, God, baby, I haven't left the house. I, I. And she just looks at me and she goes, you look like cat's life. That's what <laughs> <laughs> she is. You, you sit on the couch for a couple of minutes and you lay down when you get tired and you, and I'm like, are, are you okay? She's like, it's fine. It's fine. I just want to take a shower. I, she'll go upstairs, take a shower, come back. And she's like, okay, let's have, let's, let's see. You know, she's, she gets home. She's so agitated and irritated. And, well, if you were in a boat like, engine, a hundred degrees in Florida with humidity. I couldn't do it. Crawling and, down there with oil all over you, probably cutting your hands a hundred thousand oh, times. Oh, her hands are all beat up. And, and I had to de come home and deal with me. Pfft, no. Oh yeah, and then deal with your ass. Oh no, fuck. No, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. <laughs> no. So obviously, she's like, Matt, not now. No. <laughs> no. You guys are the complete opposites that somehow work. Yeah, it, it works. It's and you were dead without her. Oh, Wait, girl, you, my, I was all you guys broke up. With, the plans oh I, listen <laughs> they, they had broken up and fuck i mean we had strategies we had 17 oh, yeah. different strategies 17 different ways yeah yeah he's like you gotta answer right now it was a light it was, tommy i know you don't answer the phone but you gotta answer it was a long this one i strategy. need you for and i'm like all right matt what 
and and I was like, okay, this is interesting. Yeah. All right, yeah. well, all right, I'm we get, can send this guy here. Blah, 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 blah. Of getting creative, getting but creative. hey, you but got it worked back. out. Yeah. So what? So she's doing all that. You're doing all this shit. What's your next move now? Um, I mean, I'm gonna, I'm keep, I'm just gonna keep plugging away at. Or I should say, what's your priority right now? Because you got a lot of shit going on. You, you yeah. got the the new channel. You got your the true crime channel. You're working on a possible documentary for yourself. Right. The, the art. What's the priority? I mean, I think pushing, continuing to just be, um, continuing to be consistent with my with the uh, with the uploads on YouTube. You know, luckily Colby. You know, handles all that, but I mean, I I really need to get people in to do to do interviews. And the thing is, is like, it's funny because like the interviews are so beneficial to them. You know that like like I said, you know, guys have gotten their film rights options. You know, um, and you know they want their story told, and you don't know what's going to happen. Like I get I get paid to go be interviewed for this, or I get paid to be to do uh, lectures, and I do you know just because just because I do podcasts like it's 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 a benefit you start doing lectures yeah I mean I've I've done um I mean I know you did it for the government to get out of time no no <clears> I, but I didn't know you were doing them on your own no no I I I wow. literally I I got flown to uh Alabama the other day I did the Alabama um Alabama Mortgage Brokers Association they 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 paid and they flew me in and I went and I spoke in front of the there were there were the the Bankers Association was there the Mortgage Broker Association there was like 300 maybe three or 400 people. I went and did like an hour long talk. I, I talk in front of a lecture in front of, um, or I'm a guest lecturer in, uh, um, forensic accounting classes for a couple different universities. I, you know, yeah, look, you when know, I went to I just had, uh, he, uh, Noah, <clears throat> this guy, Noah was just in monster, like top forensic CPA. I would never want that job. You know what they do? Oh no, it's horrible. Oh, it's horrible going through checking everything. You, you know, you have to have Fuck a certain that. mentality. Did you ever see the accountant with Ben Affleck? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah. have to be. That's how. That's the guy you have to be. You yeah. have to be like a, a like like on the on the uh, have the on the scale for Aspergers or something. Yeah, you got to be on the scale yeah. for Aspergers. Have that van with that loaded shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but like I just went to um when I went to uh uh Amsterdam. You know, like to do to do that whole. Yeah, uh, tell me about Amsterdam. You never told me the whole everything out there. Yeah, I went out there for a week. They flew me out. They they paid me a nice chunk of money. Um, they and, did. And what was the reason why they flew you out there? Because I had to be interviewed for uh, uh inside the inside the mind of a con artist, which uh, you know which came out. It's on a Discovery Curiosity, Disc that's Discovery right Curiosity Channel. Yeah, they um, got seventeen different fucking umbrellas. Yeah. Yeah, it's got uh like that. I did that. That was a. I was interviewed by a bunch of scientists, and they put probes on my head, and they did. Oh, it was a whole thing, bro. I can't believe I didn't show you. Like, you, you there's a whole there's an hour long. It's an hour long podcast. Oh, I mean, on podcast hour long episode. What on was Discovery. the purpose of the fucking shit on they, your head? They did nothing but interview uh, con men. Who I remember, I remember you talking about. What was there six they, other people? They did the polka guy. They did the polka king. Yeah, the polka guy. I've been you. going back and forth with him for six months. I thought you did hit. I thought you did his interview. The, the, no, the day he was gonna come, I couldn't make it. He could only make it one day, and then he was going to London to do another fucking polka thing. I. I he went to Amsterdam. Yeah. and did one. Well, maybe I mean, he went he, to Amsterdam. He, yeah, he he was interviewed in Amsterdam. They, I, I think he was supposed to come here. He wanted to come right before he was going to Amsterdam, and it was impossible. No. I had three in that week. It was like it just they, wasn't gonna happen. They did the guy. Um, God was the guy. Did you get to meet the Poker King? No, no. Yeah. I just know they did an episode on him. They did an episode on this guy. Um, guy, uh, Rit, was it Christopher uh, Rit, um, Rittencord or something like that? He he was friends. With, he he built a bunch of people out of money uh, in Hollywood and in uh, in the Hamptons. Was telling people he was a Rockefeller, <laughs> and so people are handing him money. Like they they're like, oh, can you invest? He he, he ran a. Um, a trust for the Rockefellers. He did all their investing. He was a Rockefeller. He he was an uh, an investment, and he's nobody. You know, have a high school diploma, and he's he's people are handing him money left and right. He was friends with Mickey Rourke. He was dating in supermodels. This went on and on. He was from France, and he had a French accent, so that sounds good. You know, it's like somebody from 
from England. You know, as soon as they start talking, you think, oh, he's smart. No, he's just English. He just sounds, he could, he could be a complete moron. He just has an English accent. Same thing. The guy's got a, a good French accent. That Polka King, he's got a good story. Do you know his story? Yeah. He yeah. would go, he had the Ponzi scheme. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, the pyramid. And he would go around and he and he's sounds like the sweetest, nicest yeah, guy. Yeah, the whole like, thing. He'll send me Merry Christmases because we've been trying back and forth for nine fucking months. So every holiday he'll do it. And Scott, he would go around and play, what the hell is that thing called? So he would do polka. Is it the accordion? What yeah. is it? Is it an accordion? That thing, accordion. Yeah, he would go like this. Yeah, you think he's shit. a, you think he's, oh, the he's The nicest just, guy in the world. You think he's kind of a, he's kind of a doofus kind of like, like oh, he couldn't take it, take advantage of me. He's such a nice guy. He's yeah. such a kind of a, oh, did a, ha, 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 Yeah, like this old grandpa with the yeah. accent. Oh, and he's he harmless. And this and nice suit and goes to the he's church. He's harmless as he's slipping his hand in your eating fucking while pocket. he's eating you the fuck yeah. alive. Yeah. And he's got, you know, the donation thing going on, you know, donate to this, donate to this car. Calls and meanwhile, <laughs> then he starts the pyramid. You know, and yeah. the fucking pyramid goes like this, and then it got so crazy, he would have to do his little polka shit because he would line up all these like parties or whatever. Right. He would have to do like ten a day to pay Piper to pay Peter, or however it goes. You know what I mean? It was fucking crazy. <laughs> and and like you said, he's one of those guys that you look at. Like you look at you and you think. Uh, or you look at me, you think, uh, yeah, you, you think, know, oh yeah, this guy, yeah, this this guy, guy I don't trust this yeah. guy for enough. But him, you're like, oh, what a what a little grandpa. Yeah, you know, maybe will give me take me to McDonald's or some shit. You know, <laughs> who yeah. else did they? There was another one you said that was out there that was good. I think it was uh, was it an Irish guy that they had out there. I, I mean, I don't know all the guys that they did. No, it, it was the French guy. It was uh, Rocancor. He was he was that slick. was a big one. Right? He was slick. When, and what he do? He was just, people were investing with him um, so that he could manage their investments and they would give him money and he was investing, you know, in the stock market and different business ventures. I mean, he wasn't actually doing anything but spending the money, you know, but that was his, his shtick where he said he was, he was a Rockefeller. Did you see, remember, uh, you know, we were around Whitey Bulger kind of when that whole thing happened. Right. Did you see the new thing that came out? They're, they, they're saying in the news that they killed him. Like they're like admitting that they killed him. Who? I don't know. It's in the fucking news. I, well, I haven't seen. It. I saw Black Mass. Yeah, I saw Black I Mass. Mean, <laughs> you know, I saw a, I saw a documentary that talked about how Bulger was trying to basically convince everybody that he never gave the he never gave him anything. That's uh, that's all bullshit. Which is, you know, I think that's probably true. He probably gave them very little, if anything. Um. And that Connolly, the FBI agent, was fabricating a lot of the information he was getting. Uh, but you know, as far as him being killed, like I don't, I don't know. I know he got basically some guy beat him to death. Said and, he was a snitch and beat him to death. And we thought that they that he he had gotten moved from the prison because he was fighting with the nurse or made a move on the nurse. Remember that it, whole thing? Yeah, there was something like that. Then with they, some, they moved some him, and then they reason to move him. And then they stuck him in you know, with another guy and that he, in, in a, in a, in an area where he never should have been with someone else. But then again, you know, you have to understand who's running the BOP. Like these are not rocket scientists. I mean, these are guys like right now, I got a buddy right now that said every guard, every CO at Coleman right now, that the senior COs, the senior CO right now at Coleman has two years experience. What? Yeah, because they were forcing tons of guys to take early retirement because of so, COVID. Uh, and they were just like, you know, they were hiring a bunch of new guys. And he's like, literally, he said they were cell phones. So the new guys come in, they don't make that much. And what do they do? They very quickly start bringing in drugs. They bring in cell phones. They said, literally, they are finding pizza. They found something like 40 cell phones or something like that. The guys are making hooch. He said, it is nothing like when wow. I was there. Nothing. Because they cut the guy, the guys that have been there 20 years, yeah, the guys they're getting that the money, know. they want that pension. Yeah, and the guys that know, no. what, like a, a seasoned yeah. officer knows what's happening. When you say, hey, CEO, I was wondering, can I do it? No, because yeah. he already knows all the things that that, what that means <laughs> yeah. you're going to do, what you're trying to do. No, he, you can't he, He's do been that. through this for 20 right. years, so he, he's seen everything. He said a guy had snuck up in the bathrooms and, you know, the, the vent, and there's a vent in the, uh, where the, the bathrooms are it, over the the toilets, there'll typically be a vent, a small vent. Well, some guy had gotten it off, had snuck through there, was making hooch up there. He goes, oh, there's hooch everywhere. Well, while he was up there in the ceiling, he ended up 
slipping and falling through the ceiling, oh. through the drywall, because <laughs> it's drywall. It fell through the drywall, hit the ground. Oh. He's like, like I think he broke his hip. He said, and I said, and got a shot. Um, <laughs> and, and Pete was like, oh, it's he was, and they found like just. Uh, jug after jug after jug of hooch. He was just making it. He'd been making it for months. They couldn't figure out where it was coming from. Yeah. He, so he, it, oh, he so said it's a it's fucking the, madhouse. It says off the fucking chain there. And uh, real quick, because I, I really like Pete and, you know, want to keep his, his yeah. I don't like to say it like this, but like his memory, because he's still stuck in that. Uh, tell his story a little bit. This guy's got a really good story. Just summarize. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Pete was a, uh, a methamphetamine uh, um manufacturer he was making meth you know in back in the in the 80s when meth came out like he basically he and these guys basically sparked the meth epidemic and so they were making meth and they ended up getting connected with a couple of FBI agents that raided them and ripped them off for like six hundred thousand dollars well then they caught up with them and they ended up connecting with the F- same FBI agents that ripped them off they ended up bribing them, and so they were giving them information. Pete and his gang were giving the FBI information and using that information to basically stay under the radar. And multiple times, Pete's guys would get arrested and then get released. He would make a phone call, and he'd have to pay, and then they'd, they'd drop the investigation or they'd get the guy released. So he, they basically have an in with the FBI. They're bribing them. So almost like a black mask. Oh, absolutely, better than black mask. I mean, it's better because that that was a, a, a that was a very lucid um, uh, ba- relationship. Right, where, because, because you had the Irish mob right. calling on the Italian mob, so that the Irish mob could come in and take those spots, basically. Right, but yeah, it, and then they could get away with whatever they wanted. Right, these guys are just, but, but these guys are, are. This is almost like uh, also kind of like Breaking Bad, where he, they're literally running their operate, but Breaking Bad, but in the middle of Hollywood, <laughs> where they're running, cl- they're they're in penthouses and multi million dollar houses making meth. Oh, they were doing this. Where were they doing this at? They were actually, one one of their places was actually in a building. It's a famous building, and their neighbors were two of the stars from the TV show Nine O Two One O, and one another one was uh like one of the guys from Motley Crue or something. One of those bands, Motley Crue or one of the hair bands. Wait, wait, the, in the, their the, house. In, wait, in Pete's neighbor was from one of the people from Nine O Two One O. Two, there were like two of those people lived with, in the building. Uh, what's her name? Uh, Brad Pitt's ex girl. Oh uh, yeah, uh, Jennifer Anderson, Anderson or what? Yeah, yeah. Uh, wow. like like two of them lived in the building, and then uh, <laughs> and they got a another ass. rock star, some other rock star from one of the hair bands. Like, <laughs> um, but I mean, they're they're driving Ferraris. BMWs, Ferraris, Porsches, they're racing down, you know, fucking sunset. Like, it's a cra- it's an amazing story. What eventually happens is they find out that one of the guys is, uh, what the FBI tells them that this guy that you're dealing with is an informant. He's working with the government. And Pete tells the other guys about it and basically says, look, we can't deal with them anymore. And eventually the FBI basically says, look, you guys have to take care of him because he's going to rat everybody out. And so Pete's the other guy that basically the FBI tells him the information and says, you got to kill him and they kill him. Pete doesn't kill him. Pete's like, I didn't have anything. He didn't have anything to do with it. They, they were trying to get the guy to pay the FBI to quash the case. And he'd given him like a hundred thousand. He was giving him like another hundred thousand point is, is that these guys end up shooting him in the head and dispose of the body. Then there's another guy, same thing, FBI informant. Pete wasn't concerned about the guy at all. The Eventually, they say they killed them, him because he was an FBI informant. Pete says he got killed over a woman. He's like he was fucking this guy's ex girlfriend. This guy had him killed. Like that has like has nothing to do with what they're saying it was. But eventually, Pete ends up getting indicted, and he pleads guilty to, um, uh, to uh, basically conspiracy to commit murder of an FBI informant, uh, two FBI informants, and the two guys that actually did the murders they got 25 years pete got 40 pete's had his and the whole thing was arranged for pete to co-op, pete to cooperate and get his sentence cut down to like 20 or 25 years something like that and these other guys got 25 years well the person that basically basically and the whole thing was set up to cover up the fbi's involvement like they didn't want the fbi to be involved so the guy that orchestrated this entire cover up was uh, was Robert Mueller, 
which was eventually t- became the head of the FBI. At that time, he was the the elite, the U.S. attorney in um, San Francisco in California, and he covered up the whole thing. And like all the guys that were involved after they were found guilty or um, pled guilty and went to prison, they then realized like Mueller had lied to them on all these separate occasions and co- coerced them to plead guilty. That's the second guy that I heard Mueller fucked seven ways a Sunday. Well, you know, it's funny because um, Fox News uh, investigated this that the book I wrote on on that whole thing. Congratulations! Yeah, they they investigated it twice, and when they finally came back, they were like, you know, we believe everything you're saying. We've seen the documents. We've this. We've that. They said we are not, but we're not going to do an investigation. They said because at that point, Mueller's popularity. He was investigating Trump, and he was so. His popularity was so high. They said he's he's just untouchable. And they said the problem is that because I had just gotten out of prison, they said they're going to turn the, any, when we tell the story, even with the documents. I'm like, but you have the documents. Like you can prove this. Like Mueller got got on the stand and lied on the stand. I have the transcripts. Um, they said that's you know we we believe that we've seen the transcripts. They said the problem is his his. Credibility. He's so credible at this point. He said, "And you lack credibility." And they're just going to discredit you with documents or not? Right. And well, he's no. Got all the power yeah, with the, the documents or not? I was like, yeah. "Yeah, but I can't." I said, "I could lie about the story, but I can't fake the documents. They they were recorded twenty years ago in the record. I didn't fake this." And he's like, "I know. We believe you. We just can't." Like Fox wouldn't do it. Can you believe that he got away with that? Yeah. Well, listen. A, about a year and more a half, than once. About a year and a half later, it comes out that during the Trump thing he was coaxing people to testify against trump falsely yeah and he was doing all kinds of stuff like like that later came out i went back to fox and they just didn't respond he might, like, all right, well. can you imagine how hard he must have tried to get trump oh, and he, he just couldn't oh, fucking he was, get him he imagine was. how fucking mad he was when he so had to come up on that fucking stand and say i spent three years and a trillion dollars of our money fuck and find dick. I couldn't get enough people to lie. And yeah. I couldn't get enough people to do whatever Trump did or didn't do. Right. If M- Mueller's behind it, he's going to try to rig that any way possible. Yeah. Actually, three guys. Pete, Mike that was in there, and another Mike that was in there. All Mueller, all fabricated, fucked the whole thing up. Got all three of them 20 years. Yeah. And, you know, and, and on the- a case when they all three of them probably should have got, I don't know about Pete, but. Well, here's the problem is, look. Pete, what the thing about Pete is like he was a methamphetamine dealer and he probably should have gotten, you know, 10 to 20 years. Yeah. And, and Pete's like, and if I had gotten 20 years for for meth, he said, I would have been OK with that because I have it coming. He's like, I'm not OK with getting 40 years. He said for I would have got 40 years, 40 years. But he's gotten his time cut. He's gone back to trial or gone back for sentencing three different times. Because of the Mueller thing, he keeps getting sent back to back to um, to be resentenced. And instead of the government saying, "Okay, we're going to knock off 15 years or 20 years because of your cooperation, we're going to knock off two. So like two. Yeah, two, two years. And two. then they come back in and, and like it was so, so over the top ridiculous that they knocked off two years that it went all the way up to the to the um, went up to the uh, circuit court. And the circuit court said, you know, what are you doing? You can't you can't justify two years. You have to give him recent. They go, okay, you're right. Send it back. They resentence him. They knocked off four years. <laughs> Motherfuckers. They go back again. Same thing. They're like, what are you doing? Like one, you can't do that, and two, you can't give him only four years. And on top of that, you're not allowed to introduce letters from the family and this and that. Who say they did as testimony? So that was wrong. Okay, fine. We'll resent him again. They brought him. Back, they gave him. Six years off. So he ended up with 34 years. He's almost done the entire sentence. He can prove at this point that Mueller fabricated, uh, um, you know, fabricated and manipulated the entire uh, the entire case against him and will probably win the 2255 that he's just filed and what is when he's in the halfway. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, a motion sh- showing that basically that your sentence needs to be corrected as a result of uh um, your attorneys being in, ineffective, or the government um, being in, or being um, breaking, basically breaking the rules. Now, when they kept calling him back, right for the two, two, yeah. or two, that was based on Mueller's bullshit. Yeah, right? yeah, it was all, it was all, it was all Mueller stuff. Now you, now if that was anybody else, 
or any other situation. That would be all over the news. No, no, they've buried so much stuff. They've sealed so many documents. The only reason I have the documents. Okay, you would think it would be all over the news. No, I'm saying you would think, think but they, yeah. yeah, obviously it would be, but no, it's not. They sealed the documents. They're covering it up. It's a fucking cover up. You understand that I, I scanned all the documents. I have it on a website. I have it on a website called uh, um, Devil Exposed exhibits.com we'll have that in the description yeah bro sure, yeah i'm oh, looking at that shit yeah, there's like 600 and some odd f- i got <laughs> all the underlining stuff i got Mueller's testimony underlined he's crazy like that with this shit he I, when he gets into something he'll have so many documents that okay i believe you okay yeah, Matt, it's, oh, it's I, I, I know i know i'm like no i want to show you more i want to show yeah. you more no, i even have the letter that the agreement that um robert Mueller wrote to pete in writing, saying he guaranteed he would re- he would reduce his sentence. That's the problem. Is Mueller actually put it in writing? They never do. But Mueller did to get Pete to cooperate, and then afterward tried to not give him anything because he didn't think that Pete had the document. And the government lied for years, saying that there was no document, that there was no agreement, and then Pete had to prov- provided it. And then the government's like, okay, well, yes, there was one. But uh, it's no good because like it was just this. Or we can't blatant, find it. Yeah, yeah, some shit like that. Yeah, just like no, they 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 have it. Like this is. Are you saying this is not true? And they're like, uh, okay, well, yes, it is. But, uh, but yeah, uh, we don't have to abide by it because uh, uh, you know, you know what I'm saying. It's just like they're just you know they're just scumbags. Now, knowing what you know about Mueller, when they were going after Trump, did you think for sure he would find something or fabricate oh, I, something? I I felt like definitely they were going to find something. I did too, but after after like two years, I thought maybe he's having a little bit of trouble. Yeah, but I, but I thought he would fabricate something. Well, if you can get somebody to lie, how couldn't he get him on something? I mean, because there's just nothing there. There's nothing. There. Like, there's nothing there, and you just couldn't get anybody to to to, to fabricate a story that was backed up by evidence because the evidence just doesn't exist. But these guys believe so fiercely, despite the fact that there's no evidence to produce it. Instead of at some point saying. We're wrong. We're wrong. It doesn't exist. Instead of just admitting that, they they think, well, no, it's got to be because of this. It's got to be. No, it's just it's because you're wrong. And they're still talking about Russia, even though that investigation is done. They still bring that up. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I hear it in the background. I can't fucking stand it yeah, after a while. It's fine. I mean, it's you know, it is what it is. Do you think any part of this? It'd kill me if he <clears throat> ran for president, and became president again. That would just be hilarious. <laughs> Do you think you will? I think. I think if it was like Trump DeSantis, like I think that would be such a fucking shoe in. That would be hilarious. Do I think he will? I, he's so old, bro. Like I mean, to me, I'd be like, I'm tired. I'm just. I mean, I'm. I'm. I'll. Actually, in a few days from now, I'll be. I'll be 53 years old. I'm 53 and I'm exhausted. <laughs> he's he's going like like he's going gangbusters, like a mad man, and he's eating hamburgers every day. Yeah. Yeah, like I eat good and work out. Yeah. He's eating hamburgers and what, like a case of Diet Coke a day, <sighs> and he's going nonstop. Ridiculous, bro. And he's and he's sharp. I mean, you can like him or hate him, whatever you want. He's sharp. Yeah, listen, that that dude that's in there now. He <laughs> don't know what day it is. He don't know what his birthday is. He doesn't know. Like I, I can't. He's dangerous. Do you remember when Trump got in and he stumbled a couple times during a, a speech, and and yeah, he stumbled a couple times. This was when he first in. This was within six months. And the Democrats and CNN, they were saying, is he competent? Is he this? Like, you know, what, what could it, what could we do to invoke article whatever saying that he's not competent? Like, what would it take if we, and it was like, this guy stumbled during a speech one time and you guys are trying to think about how to remove him, but you've, you've got Biden who can't tie his shoes (laughs) or find his way, you know, out of, out in or out of the white house. And he he can't climb stairs, and he stub he stutters every time that he makes a speech. And you guys never say shit. Like, what is it? What what are you talking about? Well, what what if something happens? There are real problems going on. Well, uh, luckily the president just doesn't have as he, much enough power to do too much damage. And he's probably ju- he's really just a puppet. He, he's not calling any shots. Yeah, my fear is, well, who is? What's her name? I think Obama's calling the shots. No, oh my, I don't think. I, I, just, just my opinion. Uh, I don't know. I'm open minded. Like I, I said, <laughs> I, I'm really not left or right. I'm just for what's best. I don't really give a fuck. 
I, just, I know this be, ain't one. It would be not. You know. The, you know what the problem is, and I'll probably get a ton of flack for this. Is that the you know the the problem with Obama is that although I didn't like his politics, he made a great president. Like he was, was. he was well spoken. He was eloquent. He could talk your socks off. Yeah, he was. He he not, was somebody that you could say that's mm-hmm. the president, and you thought, wow, that's. He he seemed he was a legitimate, upstanding guy. He spoke well. He did. I agree. He pronounced hundred percent. You know, and then you've got, then you've got Trump, who I like his politics, and he gets in front of the microphone and starts saying horrible things, <laughs> and it's just like, oh God, <laughs> just read the speech, and he jumps back to saying some crazy thing about this and crazy thing about this. You're like, God, you, he could have gone down in history as Ronald Reagan. You know, you could have been a, an amazing Republican president. Instead, you're bashing people. You're calling people names. You're what do you and people. Something. The worst part is like you're like laughing. Like he's entertaining, but you know this isn't The Apprentice. Yeah, because you know, like I'm, because I'm watching on the outside, not thinking of a president. I'm thinking like a comedy show is coming on. Yeah, it's, you know. So like I'm turning it on. I mean, the fucking ratings were up that. <laughs> Imagine the fucking commercial. I, I, the stations I, probably missed those ratings like a motherfucker, right? Yeah, if if I because I really I I was like, oh, he's coming on at six. Whether <laughs> I liked him, didn't like his policies or not, I knew it'd be but funny. I, you know, you knew it would be funny whether you liked him or not. And, he's gonna say and, I, he's yelling at reporters. And, no, and no, the, you, you're fake news. Get out. Yeah, <laughs> and the and if even if you hated him to death, you're still tuned in. And he would go like this, you, you, every fucking time, and you know. I was laughing, but when you think about it, I was like, you're president. You know what I mean? <laughs> is, this, is this how it's going to be? Is this how it's going to be uh, w- with you as president? Yeah, yeah, this is how it's going to be. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> like, oh, what? what are you doing? I don't know. I, I think um, I don't I think he's going to run. I, I think he is. I think he, I, I think he's insane to do it. I don't think he'll win. I don't. Oh, I think he'll win. No, nah, you can't. As that. Bad as the as bad as the everything is like right now. Even the people that hate him have to be like, look, it's somebody got you something. You know what Roger Stone told me? What smallpox? Right, but and if uh, you look it up, they amped the vaccines like fucking crazy the last two years for smallpox. He is dead set. Right before the election, the next pandemic will be smallpox. If they do that, you have to mail in. If you mail in, he's not winning. Even if he could win. He's not going to win. Stone, that guy. He swears up and down, and he's been right. He's been right. He was. He's been a hundred percent right about. Even though he drives me absolutely fucking nuts. I uh, was right about Ukraine and Russia. He said it was going to take forever in January. It took forever. He said China is going to go in. I just saw them moving tanks. I don't think they're going to take forever. Going to Taiwan? Yeah, I, they just started moving tanks over there. I think they're. they're making, I don't think they're going to go in. I, I think, think it would be a dumb idea. I, I do. Well, I don't know because you got to think. Right now, you got Biden in there. He's just going to look the other way, and they can get away with murder. Now, if somebody else comes in there next, you know, they might not be able to get away with that. The only good thing oh, is they'd be if, terrified if Trump was in there. They'd be well, like, "Yeah, well, let's not." Do I don't. This I don't think this idea. would be. I don't think any of this would be happening if Trump was no, in there, whether no. you like him or not. Could, we'd have no idea what this guy's going to do. Yeah, no, I don't think Putin would have made a move. I don't. Think. I don't think he would have made a move, but look, Trump's like, okay, well, eh. make a fucking move. Yeah, good. I, uh, you know, um, I, 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 I mean, Biden has repeatedly said that he will back, you know, Taiwan. That he's not, he's not okay with them moving. And now, will he do something? I don't know. You know, it's like Obama, like we're going to support uh, our allies, we're going to support him, we're going to support him, and then he goes and takes what Crimea, and then Obama did nothing. But I, I do think Biden did the right thing by staying out of this fucking Ukraine, Russia shit and not sending not closing the air zone. I, I think he should stay out of it even more than he is because that that's their war. They're already at it. They've been at war for fucking ever. This has been building up forever and ever and ever. I understand it's people, but we're spending our money, risking our shit. Our economy's getting fucked. Let them fight. Like, why are we getting involved? They're not NATO. Let them fucking do their thing. And then if they go further to NATO, then then they got to deal with some shit. But until then, what do you? What's your feeling on that? I mean, do you think we should be involved in this shit? I mean, I don't like the idea of 
countries just invading one another for no real valid reason. And here's what really lets me know that even Russia knows what they've done is so over the line is the fact that Putin isn't even admitting it. Like when you're just blatantly saying it, that's like us invading, I- invading Mexico and and the president going on and basically saying, oh, it's just a joint kind of an exercise thing. We're not really invading. We haven't done anything. We're not doing it. It's just an exercise. It's not. It's like what? Like, I mean, like you're lying because you're trying to cover something up. If you're trying to cover something up, it's because you're embarrassed and you're ashamed and you know that what you're doing is wrong. And he, what he's doing is wrong. So I, I think it's wrong. I don't think we should, you know, look, look. And listen, here's the thing. Like, if I was running things, we would have done invaded Mexico. I'd have made Mexico. I'd be like, look, you're breaking the law. You're coming in here. We're going to go in. We're going to lock up your... Basically, I'd just be executing anybody that had cartel ties. It would be just massively horrible. It'd be just a bloodbath if I if I went in there and I was president. Like, thank God I'll never be. <laughs> it would be horrible. I'd be... Go- I'd, I'd take every country all the way back to Panama. I mean, I, I, you know, it would just... It'd be horrible and, and it'd be just mass ex- executions. I mean, because if you're just going to keep coming in this country, let's just go ahead and... Uh, Cons- yeah, yeah, I think like instead of like the little bomb bullshit, just throw the big one and, and let's just get it over with if we're gonna do it. But I I said that to see what you would say. Really, I'm I'm in between. I I don't know. I I think it should have been stopped before it started. So I I think that the Biden or Trump, if he thought he knew this this was coming, there should have been more than just little fucking sanctions that he no, doesn't I think, give a fuck. I, it should have been stopped before I it think started. You, I think or put you, the fear in him. I think you don't – I think the whole proxy war thing is kind of you know, bullshit. I think that what you do is you find out where Putin's going to be and you just – not nuclear. Uh, you know, you just bomb the ever little shit, ever living shit out of the air. You just carpet bomb the whole thing and just take him out and take, take out as much of his cabinet as possible and hope that the next guy's better. Well, you take him out, it's over. Yeah, Because yeah. The people around him don't they're, want him to Oh, no, shit. they don't want him. They're, they're just terrified of him. Yeah. And here's the, th- the problem with him is that I watched this whole program where it was like, okay, you're pr- he's probably the richest man in the world. Like, his everything's hidden, but he's probably got more money than anybody. So either way, he's whatever, uh, a trillionaire, billionaire, whatever it is. The point is, is, you know, people think, okay, well, he could always just, why not just step down? Like, why, why do this? Because the truth is, is that in... In that country, you step down and you're dead within six months. You know, like like Boris Yeltsin, when he retired and put Putin in charge, was very concerned that he wouldn't be able to live the rest of his life in peace. Like they may come in and just execute me. So they, they're trying to groom someone that will let me kind of retire in peace and step down. Like Putin's afraid. People are like, why is he holding on to power so hard? He's afraid. Think about it. If he steps down, all the next guy has to do is come. He's done so many bad, horrible things and stolen so much money and so many backroom door, door so so many backroom um, deals. The next guy steps in and says, oh, my gosh, we went through the books. It turns out that this guy's been making hey, there's all kinds of corruption. So he either comes in and gets arrested and tried and spends the rest of his life in prison or he kills himself or he you know they, or he, they come in and they just they or they just execute him you know like you can always send in the military to grab him and say he pulled a gun and you know have him killed and say yeah it uh, turns out he killed him we well, had to kill he, him he's and, been fucking president since like 90 right well he swapped at one point one he swapped point, for yeah. a couple of years as what prime minister whatever they call that that minister uh position then jump right yeah, back jump right back but in. That's what I'm saying is that it's so it's like so if you get to that point where you've been you can't step down, he's trying to think about how to kind of ingrain himself in the Russian landscape so much that he can do something so amazing that he won't get hurt, like expanding the government. And keep in mind, too, the population of Russia is shrinking. Like, it's not like it's growing. It's shrinking. They're living on like $600 um, a month, you know, the average uh, compared to what a, a U, the average U.S. household is or, or you know, uh, what is it? Like, it's like $7,200 a year. So that's like 600 bucks a month. It's, it's low. So, I mean, what, you know, they don't make enough money. 
He can't step down. There's nowhere he can go that he'd be safe. So what does he do is he's at that point where he's pushing the envelope, I think, to try and just garner as much power and rebuilding the entire Soviet Union or the rebuilding Russia by is maybe his for some reason, that's his play. I, I can't believe one of the people at the top hasn't just popped him in the back of the Me head either. with a 22. I knew I, I thought that would happen by now, but he must be well, he's bunkered down like hell and he oh, I'll bet you he, every guy that gets near him, they're patting him down. Oh, Can you imagine yeah. that. Oh fuck yeah! They're patting him down. You saw like him talking to to the general yeah. when, when, during the like, why are things? What's happening with this? And they they were they were terrified. Well, I just heard him say the other day. He's like, well, yeah, you know, our next move is uh, supersonic missiles. We've been testing them, and that's the next move. Yeah, but he they, they, they really just they, they just don't have that. You, you saw how well they're doing. You should have crushed. They should have crushed Ukraine bad within three days. They yeah, should have. He, crushed he got them. bad insight. I think he was in that bunker. Over not getting killed, like you said. I think maybe he had cancer and they were fixing him up, worried about COVID, whatever the fuck. So I think he got bad intel because it's not like they don't have a well, fucking good military. And if you think they don't have a, they don't have a, but most got, of their people are conscripted. They don't have a stand like with the U.S. Look, let me let me give you an example with their their um with how much time they get to fly their own planes. So in the U.S. Uh, the average pilot gets something like 1,400 flight hours a year. Okay, that's 1,400 hours or whatever it is that they're in the actual cockpit. Like, so if you take the same plane and you put a Soviet, let's say, let's pretend for a second that their planes are, are the equivalent of ours, which they're not. But let's say they are. And you put a Russian pilot, well, he's got maybe 200 hours a year of flight time. Oh, you can't compare I him to a, things. right. And yeah. he's only been, been flying for f what? Four to six years where our pilots will go in the military and stay for 25 and 30. They'll retire. Like these guys are conscripted. They don't have like a standing military. That's nothing but military. We have a major portion of our military that, you know, our career military guys, like they don't get paid well. They're not equipped well. They're not treated well. You know, so that that's an issue. The other thing is like Russia, Russia's really only lethal within their border or their own borders and and a few hundred miles outside their border. Like they could if they wanted to invade the United States, they couldn't get their army there here. They couldn't get their air force. They couldn't get here. We can pick up our military and move around the world. They don't have the transports. It's the same thing with China. They'll have a they'll have a problem just getting their people into fucking Taiwan. Well, China won't be physical. <clears throat> China will be cyber. They're, they're not going to do if they. If, well, they they have a was, ton of missiles. They have a whole. Yeah. You know, like we have like we have like four branches of our government. You know, they have an entire branch that's dedicated to just missiles. Well, they have. They, Mike Baker was on uh, Rogan, and he's that big CIA guy. Right. And he said they have missiles now that before you could catch them because, you know, boom, they shoot it. You know, not nuke missile, but kind of like a nuke missile. It's gone almost at the speed of sound, but you can catch it. Now it's as fast as the speed of sound. And when they shoot it, <clears throat> it could be going towards Seattle, and you see it at Seattle and make a hard right and just crush whatever. And they have that, and it's already capable. So if someone sets one of those supersonic missiles off, that's it. You know, the other problem with, with China right now is they have a major problem with— uh, they, they're, they're about to have one of the—not lar the lar one of—they're about to have the largest bankruptcy case of a company in their, inside of China. It's a construction company that's been wow. building all of their—you you know that— that's been building all these houses. You know how they have like almost entire cities that are like 30%, 40% vacant. Mm -hmm. Cause they've been building, they have a, a construction company. The government was backing mortgages and loans. And so this construction company got excessively large because there was ton, there were tons of people. There was a big push for, to get people to move from the um, rural areas to the urban areas. So, they were allowing them to come to ch come and buy or back mortgages, buy condos and houses and things and get jobs. But there weren't enough jobs. But the construction companies kept building and building. And then people were putting down down payments and they were using the down payments to fund other things, which, oh, of course, is, is, you know, in the U.S. that could never happen. Right. 
it got so bad that the Chinese government a few years ago stopped backing those mortgages. So then they went or backing those, those some of the, some of those investments. So then they went to outside investors and started borrowing money from from uh, outside uh, investors. Well, I think it was in the first part of this year they missed that this construction company actually is in such dire straits they missed the interest payments on those uh, um, those uh, um, uh, international investors. And they're about to miss or have missed the second one. Mm. And so what's going to happen is they're saying this company is going to go down. It's going to be the largest bankruptcy in history for China. And and also all the money that was dumped into, you know, all the super trains, Mm -hmm. these fast trains. People are like, wow, they're amazing. They've got all these bullet trains and it's great. They're going from empty city to empty city with nobody on them. And the people that dumped all the money into those super trains, those massive, amazing um, uh, investments, they're not getting paid either. Like there's all these things like that. Their economy slowly starting to break down too. So to me, and I they're mean, all about pride too, right? So do you? They're not. They're they're going to try to hold back that bankruptcy as much as they fucking can, right? Well, I I mean you would you would think, but yeah. but it's not like the government's going under. But think about that. That's another one of those things that what happens if that company goes under and lays off all their employees? How many other people are affected by those people losing their job? Like, and then you have it's to a powder cake. The thing, and then everything we get is from China, so right? That, yeah. that affects us too, right? Well, and that's the whole thing. Do you do that, go into Taiwan, and let's say the United States does nothing. The international community does nothing. But you know what they will 100% do? They will put sanctions on you. And they will say, you know what, listen, you guys are just getting crazy. You have a good thing here. Your economy's growing. Things were going good. You got crazy. Now you're invading other countries. And I don't care whether you say, oh, that was always ours. And stop it. Cut the fucking shit. The the bottom line is this. We're just not going to buy anything from you anymore. Now you're, now, I mean, because of, if you bomb all your enemies, who are who are all your, if you bomb all your customers, then you've got a problem. That's just stupid. So they'd be shooting themselves in the foot. So I don't see them going into, I just don't see them going into Taiwan and putting themselves in an even worse situation. Maybe they were just, you know, making the move. To but make they've the look. been doing you know, they that. They play that shit. Well, you know, they've yeah. been doing that. Like for the past like five or ten years, they've been flying right through their their nose, no their, fly, their fly zones, zone. or into the yeah. airspace. So like maybe they're, they're just constantly. Maybe yeah. I mean I I hope so because I hope so too because to me then there's the depression the right. second that hits that's right it. and it doesn't help it you know it, it doesn't help China here's the thing too let's say there's let's say they do that let's say they go in let's say we don't interfere but we put sanctions on them and we say you know what fine we're gonna stop buying your products and people will freak out we'll, we're already in a bad spot we'll, you know we'll, by that point we're gonna be in a bad spot anyway. They put some sanctions on them. It hurts their economy even worse. There's, there's always a chance that their own that their the people rise up and say, "Yeah, we're done with this with the Communist Party." And they try, now they tried to do that during you know Tiananmen Square. And unlike in Europe, where the European country uh, breakaway, the Baltic states and all these states that were breaking away, all the stands, there were uprisings, but their military wouldn't shoot. Like even give when they're given the orders, okay, open fire. The Russians are like, I'm not eh, doing that. Well, yeah. I'm not firing on these people. I'm sorry. Yeah. So it'd be like going in like the like Americans say it, like the government saying, okay, there's a huge riot. Uh, we're gonna get the national guard up. Okay, uh, fire on these people. Like most of these guys would be like, what? <laughs> no, no, no. Just fire into the crowd. They're they're. Whoa, bro. I'm I'm not I'm not doing that. Like I'm I'm sorry. China wouldn't like that. They say fire and they fucking started mowing their own fucking people down in Tiananmen Square. (laughs) You know, like that's what like that's why when all these when all the the communist regimes were falling in Europe and they the Chinese tried to do it, you know, the Chinese population tried to do it. You know, they mowed them down and they stayed in power like that was like, yeah, look, we're we're not Europeans. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're not Russian. <laughs> we'll fucking kill. We got, we're we we're dying to kill yeah. off a bunch of you fuckers. You're eating too much. Every one of our males goes in the military, motherfucker. Yeah, so yeah. you don't want to play with us. Yeah. So, so I just, once again, that there's a fear that they've already seen it almost happen a few times. Like yeah. maybe our economy goes bad. We invade. We, our people find out that we're, we've got massive losses Suddenly, there's no more orders. You're losing your jobs. There's a good chance they just they 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 riot 
and they go in and they just fucking take out everybody in the CCP and they start a new fucking democracy. That's possible. Yeah, <clears throat> it's possible. No, fuck that. Anyway, to your art for let you got it. <laughs> to your art. Yeah, to your art. Jeez. So tell me about this is your a long ass podcast too, huh? What, what? I'm gonna let you get out of here. We'll, we'll show off some of your art. Can you pull up uh, his Instagram? It's uh. You have a meeting. Six. Huh? I'm ready to go. Let's keep going. <laughs> <laughs> so you got into the art. I remember you. I remember when you started. You started. Do you cut with, these up? No. Uh, you started with Biggie and Tupac. Well, I just no, remember I those. Start, I you just remember those. I but started those with the all ones kinds I of. wanted. Yeah, you know. And oh, there you look. Uh, Look. Okay. Oh wait. The, see, I would think you would love. Look. Look at that. Um. Scroll down, uh, Scott. Yep. Um. The um, like the time lapse for uh, George Washington. Where? Listen. Oh, down. Okay. Uh, yep. Right there. Click on uh, George Washington. No, no, no. In the middle. The one in the middle. Oh, That's I'm the sorry. time lapse. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, unmute it's that. A, it's a video. Yeah. Unmute that. Right there. Check this out. That's fucking cool. How long did that actually take you to do? Oh, days. Day. That took like four, five. Well, um, you know, I don't work. That's hard to say. Maybe 20, 20 hours, 30 hours. Yeah, so I, I, so funny. So Dominic. Appreciate you watching. Dominic saw this painting. Of that. Um, he saw that painting and he said, "Oh, I gotta have that." I did another one, which is um, scroll down a little bit, Scott. What's going on? Oh, wait. Let's play another fast. Is another one where you're painting like that? Um, well, I got, oh, 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 there's. Well, yeah, you got Tupac. Either one of those, the uh, the one on the left or the one on the right. Those are both um, time lapses. Which one? Yeah. No, in the middle. In the middle. No, okay. To the left. Okay, you see any place that I'm pointing? See where I'm holding the mic, or I'm pointing uh, to where the it's right. me. He's got his watch on to the right. Up, up, right there. Right. Yep, play that one. And then unmute that. They always do that shit. Yeah. Uh, and I'm gonna be painting a Snoop Dogg. Here's the picture. <laughs> right. Pretty cool. Check this out. Yeah, this guy is a guy in uh in Canada that buys stuff from me. He's got, he's got like four or five paintings of mine that are all like this. And you do that right off the picture. Yeah. Just looking at the picture. Smoking my own brain, cush from the land, laying out. Now how long did two of those take to do? Probably twenty or thirty hours. It doesn't take that much more to do That's really good. a second one. Yeah, you know, it takes about fifty percent longer. So if it takes me Twenty hours it take me thirty to do too. All right, that's it. That's the painting. See ya. So now, if somebody wants to buy one of these, where where do you go to buy one? Yeah, to, is this still DM you, or or what's the best place to buy one? No, it's my go to my Instagram, and they can hit they can you know hit me up on Instagram or uh, go to my just send me a, a an email, you know, like I've got my email address is uh, inside true crime dot com or inside true crime. Yeah, it's inside true crime at Gmail. That's right. Okay, inside true crime at Gmail. Okay, we'll have all that in the description um, and all your paintings up there. And it's good shit, man. Keep it up. I hope once you get done with the documentary with you or whatever you're doing with that, I hope you push this because this is amazing. Yeah, this is what basically this is the big this is the big thing that pays my bills is a uh, painting, which yeah. is you know. And you got it. I mean, I have I had Pat uh, Janino in. I had uh, I can't even say the other guy's name, Justine. Remember I was showing you some of those guys? Yeah. I mean, you have that capability. To just, you know, time. Yeah. Well, thanks Thank for coming back in again. Oh, it took fucking six months to get you back in. <laughs> I can't believe this is it. All right. <laughs> All right, man. Well, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. I appreciate you having me. Oh, if, if you me? have never watched the video feed podcast on Spotify before, a settings pop-up box will pop up. Tap on settings. Turn Data Saver off, go back to the episode, hit play, you'll never have to do this again. Mm -hmm.